Hey guys, this is episode two of our uh, unaired episode for Nona's birthday. This is with our friends Eric and Ashley from Failure to Stop Podcast. Uh, if you haven't watched part one yet, go back and watch that one first, and then come right back to this. Have a good week. What's, what's the one that you like down near Chalo? That we we so, silver silver coast yes silver oak it's a very iconic cabernet in california so this this it's place my ocean Isle. yeah this place is tucked back off the highway there's no signage or anything mm-hmm. like that we just and there's apparently a nudist colony right around the road we we just it. let's go we found it completely by accident <laughs> i went, I went jogging on a nudist beach yeah and was like so disappointed in myself. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Was it all like old dudes and their balls? Dude, it, there was a, there was old women too. But I mean, it was more or less like those that like 40 to 50 year old like white trash. We yeah, looked like, at their website though. They seemed like, I mean, for one place, like terrible. It's like a campground and mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. have to like book and stuff. Dude, I went to an orgy. And it was the grossest thing. You went to an orgy on accident. I did How not. How do you accidentally go to? An I didn't orgy? even partake. Sure. Do you have time? You're, you're only saying that because your wife is here. No, my, my wife knows all this whole story. It's okay. happened. Go yeah. Do we have time on the show? Yeah, no. go for it. Okay. We're so, probably going to turn this into a that. two-parter. It's one minute and forty-two seconds. I mean, one, one hour. One hour and forty. Uh, New Zealand, some young blog, be my guest just for fucking off. Where are you from? Up mm-hmm. there, at the top. In red. Oh, oh my God. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Um, all right. I will just make a quick story. Yeah. So, um, that you accidentally stumbled yes. upon an so game and your I, dick fell into a hole. No, it didn't. I didn't have any sex. So these, this cool. influencer lady, I did a show back when I was on, I, I'm like, I don't want to give too much information. Okay. I was on the major network doing a show. She was one of the guests. She's an influencer. Thousands, like, hundreds of thousands of followers or whatever mm-hmm. and knew where I live or in the area I live. Mm-hmm. And so they invited me to a party mm-hmm. and this was like around in August or something like that. And oh, this I was past like, year. no, no, no. This is a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. Like two or three years ago. And uh, like right after COVID, like mm-hmm. right after COVID. Mm-hmm. And they were like, you know, we're having this party, blah, blah, blah. If, are you interested in going to this party? And I was like, um, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll go to this party. Sure. Like thinking it's just be my wife, we'll find a babysitter, we'll go to this party. Well, then they buy like four cases of my rum, which is a lot of rights, like 700 bucks or something like that. And I was like, fuck, yeah, this is crazy. And then they're like, yeah, it's like, it's going to like start at like eight o'clock at night. And we're, you got to be part of this private group. We're going to send you the private group message. I mean, these are really pretty people, like gorgeous models, people. And, and then, and so it's like, you're not, I wouldn't even like, it wasn't even on my wife's radar that this was going to be like some kind of weird party. And they're like, it's, it's a rented house mansion type deal. And we're going to give you the address the day of. So those of you are flying into Raleigh, like you'll stay here and we're going to, so I end up going by myself and, um, this was too late to get a, a babysitter mm-hmm. and I show up and like, immediately I notice like two porn stars. And I'm like, oh, and you just recognize them immediately. Holy shit, of course. You knew, um, no, okay. Of course. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, from Instagram, not from porn. Sure, but sure. Actually, okay. they're really famous. Like most people would know them. Most guys would probably know who they are. Uh, so I, you would know exactly who I've they been, are. I've been looking at you, waiting for your reaction. I'll show you guys who they are afterwards, and you'll be like, okay. oh, okay. And I was I've like, never seen porn in my life, so these people I won't recognize. Yeah, but you, like, even if you have never seen porn, you'd. They've been in the news. You know the media. you know the Mr. Clean guy that's in all the memes that everybody shares. They're never about porn, but it's like this is the worst plumber ever, and it's the one bald guy because they do all the right. role playing type stuff. I've literally have no idea what you're talking about. It, okay, I'll show you. They've Anyways. been in ads. Okay. You'll be like, oh, they've probably been on TV shows. They've been on ads. Yeah, in TV shows. They're like super. Ads. Okay. Yeah, they're like super famous people. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh shit, I know who both those people are. And then I noticed another person that's an influencer. And, I, you know, it was just a really cool experience. And then I hung out, ate some really great food. But the great thing is when I, when I got there, the people who opened the door were, like, wearing Hawaiian shirts with nothing underneath. And I was, like, unbuttoned. And I was like, oh, 
So, okay. So I go outside. I sit kind of by myself. This dude that's the youngest, like uh, maybe like 100 millionaire, 100 millionaire ever to exist, was there and he got it off of Bitcoin. He was there. And so he came and sat by me. He was really quiet. And then um, there's two other people. I don't want to say who they were, but they were sitting there too. And I was like, yo, I got to go. Like, this is a little intense. Like, I definitely don't belong here. Like, I'm not an influencer. I'm a nobody. Like, this is a lot of cool fucking people. And I've never been anything like this. I'm going to leave. And so the host was like, well, you can't leave until after the show. I was like, all right. So I waited an hour. They have this show. They have these, like, strippers come in. They do this, like, big strip show. I mean, it's like, I guess, classy strip show. Like, a dance, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, we're all standing around at this party watching this thing in this mansion of these, like, two strippers dancing. I'm just kind of like, this is fucking crazy. Like, these are some, like, wealthy fucking well-to-do people. Like, one person was from Detroit, and is like, a politician. Did you ever, at any point, think that they were about to release you out in the field and they were behind you? A little bit. (laughs) So, I left probably, like, 8 p.m., and I tell my wife, I'm like, dude, this is fucking crazy. Like, they had this, they had that. And she's like, oh, man, that's wild. So anyway, fast forward like a year, I get another invite, but it's for a Halloween one. And my wife's like. You're not allowed to go. No, my wife saw the message because we share an Instagram account, Chansey Family. Mm-hmm. And so she sees this message come through that invites me. And she's like, hey, did you see so-and-so invited you to this Halloween thing? I said, Yeah. I was like, we're not going though, right? And she was like, I'm not going. Like, I'm pregnant, blah, blah, blah. She's like, but I think you should go. And I was like, dude, it's going to be a fucking orgy. She's like, it's not going to be an orgy, but like, just being adult, be respectful. They bought a lot of rum, like just show face and do what you did last time. And I was like, I mean, maybe I have a Halloween party at my own distillery and bar that night. Right. Probably won't make it. So she's like, well, whatever. So like one like eleven o'clock rolls around. My wife calls me. She's like, "Are you going to that party?" And I'm like, "Ah, oh, dude, I'm not even out of the distillery yet. I'm probably just gonna come home." She's like, "All right." And she's like, "Well, like if they haven't messaged you or anything, then fine." As soon as I hang up, I get a message. And it's like, "Hey, are you coming?" And I'm like, "Fuck." So I call my wife back. She's like, "Just go." And I was like, "Dude, it's midnight. Like it's gonna be really fucking weird." She's like, "It's just gonna be a party. Like just don't do any of the weird stuff." I was like, "All right." It's like an hour away. So I oh get there at like gosh. one in the morning and I drive, dude. And the guy wants my phone and wants me to sign an NDA <gasps> and this big security dude. And I'm like, all right, I'm not going to sign that, but just tell the host I was here. If you would. So he goes in, she comes out topless. This host whom I know, well, like I've met a few times, but I've not seen topless. I was like, holy shit. Gives me a huge hug. I'm like looking at the sky <laughs> <laughs> invites me in. There's two completely naked women with trays of like shrimp and crawfish and sparkling wine. One has sparkle on, one has a crawfish. There's nobody else downstairs. There's definitely a porno going on upstairs. Very loud. I mean, a massive, massive house. Echoey, marble floored, massive house. And so she's like, just make yourself at home, blah, blah, blah. I got to go upstairs and take care of stuff, but I'll be back down in a few minutes. Make sure, all right. And when you're done eating... Come on, you get, you're more than welcome to come upstairs. And I was like, all right. So I'm hanging out, and it's just two naked women with food and drink and me. I was like, what? And the girl's like, so where are you from? And I'm like, um, and I tell her, you know, she's like, would you like some wine? And I'm like, yeah. Um, and she's like, so uh, how do you know? And, she's like, and I'm like, dude, I can't have a conversation with a chick butt naked. <laughs> like, she's wearing high heels, that's it. And I'm like, trying to look around. And I'm just like, I just want to finish my beer or my wine and just get the fuck out. So finally the guy comes down, like this like made for the ear guy. I don't know what you call him, but he comes out, he's like got a tux on. And he was like, Mr. Tansy, he's like, would you like to uh, go upstairs and view or partake in the orgy? <laughs> and I was like, uh, excuse me. And he was like, are you offended? And I was like, no, no, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not offended. I just, uh, um, I, I think I'm going to pass, if that's okay. I was just really just stopping by to say hi. He was like, yes, sir? Okay. And he walks away. And now my heart is just like beating through my chest. I got these two naked chicks, nobody downstairs, glass of wine. The porn upstairs is not a porn. It's a live orgy. 
I'm losing my shit. The host lady comes down. She's like, Eric, uh, did someone invite you or tell you that there was an orgy upstairs? I was like, yeah, I, I just found out. And she's like, um, she was like, so I, I wouldn't expect that you would partake in an orgy. And she's like, but would you be offended to watch? And I was like, um, I mean, I, I, it wouldn't offend me. No, but like, and she's like, well, Oh, w- would your wife, would your wife be offended if you went and looked at an art orgy or saw the orgy? I was like, at this point, I think my wife's going to be offended if I don't. <gasps> so I should probably go and see. It. So I walk upstairs and I'm thinking I'm going to see like four or five people banging. It was like 50 fucking people. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm talking like, oh, see, it smelled so bad. I covered my glass. It smelled like burnt rubber, condoms, and like mushroom fields. I don't even know. Oh it was the God. grossest thing. I was up there for like 45 seconds. I remember every position and everything <laughs> that I saw. It's been burned into my brain. I have never, like, there's nothing else I remember 45 seconds of ever. But this orgy, dude? I remember every 45, like, I can tell you every position and what every person looked like there. You're so descriptive with the scent that I smell there. Bro, it's gross. It was, it, it, like, literally made me go, like, well, I'm never having, I'm never going to partake in an orgy because that fucking stinks. Literally stinks. So I was, I was, like, I watched for 40, like, maybe 45 seconds. I was, like, Oh shit. And so I'm like, I bailed, right? Like I go downstairs and she was like, Oh, Eric, are you okay? Okay. I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Like, like, look, I, I just got an aisle on the wall. You know, and she's like, are you offended? I was like, I, I'm not offended. I'll find like, this is so cool. Thank you for inviting me. So cool. It was, uh, and she's like, wasn't it something to see? And I was like, it really was something to see. I've never, she's nope, like, have nope. you ever seen anything? You like said she's an influencer. Yeah. So money very new in life. Yeah, she's young. Okay. I know that she has Airbnbs like all around the world. I know she makes like six figures a month. So I have this theory when it comes to people with money, specifically people who have new money. Yeah. Uh, they're never pleased. And so it's always something new and what can top Bigger. it. So that story that you just told um, basically just happened here like about a year or two ago. Um, here? All, no, <laughs> not at this just... house. No. Um, there's a lender. That's like the number one lender here in town that everybody is trying to do business with. And I do not do business with him because he throws parties like this. Yeah. And like walks girls around his house, butt ass naked, leashes and everything, oh. giant orgies. And, you know, just like. There was a dude there walking a chick around on a leash. Yes. Like, like a well to do yes. gentleman looking yes. guy walking. And it was a black girl. Too, which yeah. made it like extremely awkward. Yeah. I was like, Should you be watching yeah. a black person around on a leaf? Like, I feel like that's racist and somehow. But I mean, I guess what's the difference of a white chicken and a black chicken? But anyway, uh, yeah, like once you get to a certain point in life, money can buy you anything. Yeah, and but like, I mean, even if I had that money, I don't think I would you. do. Like, I would not. I wouldn't want my children. I wouldn't want that to be my legacy. No, absolutely not. I wouldn't want like. I think discipline is important in life, like whether it be physical fitness discipline, your eating discipline, you know, like, you, but you do have a discipline. You're not like a fuck. You're not like, you know, I, I just get signed fat, back up yesterday. I get, Yay, I just back. Bro, I just lost 17 pounds, but I, I was going to say, you look I got, I got thick, bro. Like, I mean, it happens. It goes in face, but there's like a discipline, right? Like you might fuck up and start eating a bunch and get, you know, 226 pounds. And then you get back down to 207 pounds. But it's like these sexual deviants that are like, or, or people eat or do drugs. It's the people that like have no discipline ever. Like they don't have the self awareness to be like, yeah, this is not healthy. I shouldn't do this, and they back off. They try to learn from their mistakes. You know, like I, I don't want to be like non empathetic to people who have different backgrounds. And they want to explore different things. Like everybody has a different. You know, they don't have the discipline that we have being from the military or whatever. So I, I don't want to be insensitive to that. But like. You got to have some kind of discipline. You can't just be like one of these Mariah Carey's or these like, you know, big P Diddy's or something like that where you're having these lavish. And that's what you're known for. Like, hey, it's gross. One, like, and two, are people not scared of STDs anymore? Is that Dude, just me? That, like, I know. Like, no, I, that is my number one. Like, fear. I hear all these people talking about like tender hookups and Twitter. And I'm like, dude, like, it doesn't ever cross your mind. And maybe one of these chicks have like, Sure. Yeah, something, you know, like. When I told her that I couldn't remember the last time we were a condom, she was like, 
you're going to get I tested. literally like threw up. Like that is so <laughs> disgusting. Mean, I, he said I, he's never worn a condom in his life. I like No, you well, said well, you have well, no. <laughs> well, like I mean You were 12 having sex with I I, I, had, I mean, I've only had sex with like three women, so like I, it doesn't oh. really matter to me. And I married two of them. So. I really don't like this one. I'm trying so hard and I'm that just was not a fan. This one? That we haven't identified yet. Right. I was just, I mean, I, I'm not like paying attention, but I'll just say New Zealand seven year blog. One of these has got to be New Zealand seven year blog. Where is my own? Is that another Chilean one? I, I didn't think I got multiple. Oh, it's seven year blog, Simeon. Uh, Margaret Rivers. I have no idea where it's from. It doesn't say. Oh, yeah, it's Australia. So yeah, yeah. Like, just right around the corner. Pretty close. Right around the corner from New Zealand. Here's our. It's really hard to do this without like a piece of paper and like focusing and paying attention. Right. No, I'm loving the stories that are going along with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That have well, nothing to do with why. So anytime, anytime I have something that I'm I'm doing, I got to go somewhere. I just signed up for the gym again yesterday, and she's like, "You're gonna walk in there, and there's gonna be all these girls and all this stuff." Sits everywhere, and, I'm like, and you're gonna have so much fun. No, I'm going to. I'm going back to one of my favorite gyms in the area. It's super old school. They have nothing but like plates and weights that you would have seen in the 1980s. Yeah, yeah. it's only people that are power lifters. There's a they they're uh it's actually two companies uh, uh former UFC fighter owns the other half of these nice. uh, jiu jitsu gym yeah <laughs> um which is like way it's like the jiu jitsu gym I come yeah. with like downstairs is CrossFit yeah. upstairs jiu jitsu so this, it used to be a whole it was it's a big warehouse it's in the office park it's a really big building they've got just weights and racks and all that kind of stuff there's nobody over there dogs are allowed that was one of the biggest things for me when I moved down here. I didn't really have any friends, right. didn't know anybody, so I could take my dog with me to the gym. Oh, damn. Yeah. That's cool. yeah. And so I'm going back there. And she, so all of your stories that you're saying, anytime I'm not with her, I'm going to a meeting or a gala for yeah. a nonprofit or something like that. This is what's going through her mind. Tansy told me the story about stumbling into an orgy. I know well, you're going like to stumble into my an orgy. Wife knows. Um, and I'm like, I'm super, I keep thinking she's sitting there. But she's went not. outside. Yeah. Um, well, like I, uh, one, I'm obsessed with my wife, so I would never cheat on her. Two, I'm also like extremely honest. Like I have no secrets, none. My phone's not locked. You can't even surprise her. You can go through my photos. You can go through my history. I don't have any secrets. And uh, so she knows that if I did cheat, she would know immediately because I've never deleted a text in my life. <laughs> I've got like hundreds of thousands of texts. I've never deleted a message in my life through Instagram. But also like, she also knows that, like, whenever I see a girl, I might go, damn, that chick's hot as fuck. And then all of a sudden I start thinking, that's a lot of makeup. That's an expensive handbag. She looks like she could probably be a bitch. She probably doesn't raise her kids very well. She probably has a kid. You know, like, I mean, in my brain, like, I have all these faults that I see in a yeah. person. And I'm immediately, like, not attracted anymore because my wife is, like, on another level for me. You know, she's, like, perfectly matched for me. Like, I look at my wife and I'm like... She's an amazing mother to my five kids. She's an amazing cook. She pulls up with all my shenanigans. I have no rules. I can do whatever I want. She doesn't question anything. Um, and I couldn't be happier. So I know, like, even if there was a hot chick that was, like, talking to me for a few minutes, already creeping in my brain is like, bitch, please get away from me. Because I would never ruin what I got going on right now. <laughs> like, you don't have a chance with me. Oh. You know what I mean? Plus, my dick's too small for you. Anyway, probably, like, most likely. Especially you've been with a lot of dudes, you know? My wife probably hadn't been with a lot of guys, so I think I she was with was Irish, and I know their penis sizes. So. Have, you, have you seen any of our episodes yet? No. Uh -huh. We had talked about something a couple, like, a week or so ago, and then I opened the very next episode, introducing myself, saying, you know, this is the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. I'm your host, Small PP Andrew, and she just fucking breaks down. She had no idea I was going to say it because yeah. I just kind of riff the intro every time. Mm -hmm. I, I think about it a little bit in advance, but sometimes something will come to me and I'm like, yep. That's I don't exactly know if my say. piece is necessarily small, but when I ask my wife if it's big, she says, it's pretty. You have a pretty, you have a pretty penis. So I'm guessing that means huge, right? Yeah. Like that means yeah. massive, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Like in women's rooms. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty. It's cute. You have a cute, cute. You have a cute penis. <laughs> yes. Like she's like it's 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 very clean and pretty, and it presents itself very well. What was 
we just watched something recently and that was what somebody said it was like they were like no it's like the perfect shape and like shade and <laughs> yeah there's no spots on it right. <laughs> yeah but you know i've been in a locker room with like a bunch of military dudes i've never been like you know like just the biggest in the room but i've never also been like you don't walk around doing the helicopter oh yeah i'm definitely <laughs> But not because I have a big dick, just because I thoroughly enjoy yeah. helicoptering my penis yeah. around. Uh, that was a t-shirt idea we had, too, by the way. Yeah. Just literally it doesn't things. hurt? It never makes me not laugh. No, I probably helicopter three times a week. <laughs> <laughs> like, if my wife is in my bedroom when I get out of the shower, like I'm helicoptering. He's never helicoptered. <laughs> really? No. If my wife is, like, on the bed, like, putting on pantyhose or something, and I come out of the shower, I'm like, hey... I mean, look at, you know what I mean? I'll walk, I'll walk in and I start groping her. And yeah. I do that too. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I never, I never miss a moment. She actually, she tries to be quiet with the drawers because if I hear the drawer opening and I'm on the couch, I'll walk in so I can watch her. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. So I try to be sneaky to get dressed so that he's not walking in on me and he always knows. It's like, She's getting yeah. dressed. She's naked. Well, she's I not. know. She's been gone for longer than 30 seconds. Like, when I was dating my wife, we've been married for like 14 years now. Oh dating she was like is it all you think about is sex and i was like yeah yeah 100 percent. like i mean i might go like a few minutes without but like it always comes back <laughs> <laughs> how do you get anything done like well i used to just jerk off all the time but yeah yeah okay. yeah if i'm thinking about it too much I'm just gonna jerk off yeah. actually my wife makes me do it now like most times she's like Go jerk off and then come back. <laughs> so you got to think about it. Before we came here, she was like, she put on a shirt. I was like, tell me you're not wearing a bra with that. And she's like, okay, I already see how today is going to be. Go jerk off <laughs> in the shower because I'm not going to be groped the whole way to Wellington. Like, <laughs> That's yeah. funny. She's like, go get it out of your system so I don't have to be groped the whole way. And Wellington. then you still groped her. No, for like 45 minutes. Like okay. She got, a, she got a 45 minute break from it. She was in the bathroom putting this on. That was rubbing my face on yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. She was like, I'm helping. I'm helping yeah. you get dressed. I was telling, I was telling her when I stand behind her, I'm like, I'm supporting you. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm helping. That's, I always do that. And then my other favorite thing to do is like when we shower together and she's washing her hair, I pee on her. She doesn't know. Don't tell her though. It's like been my secret for 14 years. She's got her eyes closed and she's washing her hair. I pee right on her feet. It's just something I do. Are you she has no idea. Territory, like she what? No what, what? What is like? I don't know. Like I can do it. it. I can get away with it. She doesn't know. I like. I just hope it doesn't like smell bad. Pee. Like I hope it's like hydrated pee, so it doesn't stink. I like. Uh, just don't have asparagus beforehand, right? And then you get. Away with it. Yeah, but she does it every time. She washes her hair like thoroughly. What do we got here? I have no idea. I um. But um, yeah. I mean, I think that's part of like the thing about being in a happy relationship is like. Getting away with being on people. Sure. Um, you know, but it's like for me, it's like I've never called my wife a name. I've never called her a bitch. I've never told her to shut up. I've never like I've never said anything nasty to my wife. Um, being that I own a bar and I work at a bar, I have a lot of dudes come in and they're like, "Man, my wife's being so, like, oh, my wife wants to do this. I'm not fucking doing that." Like, so I just send her off with her friends for the weekend for her birthday. If my wife wanted to do something for her birthday. Like, literally, like, I'm not just saying this. I would want to make that happen. Like, if my wife was like, I want to go to a labyrinth of roses, you know, a rose labyrinth in Newburn or whatever that flower, you know, I would be like, dude, it's your birthday. Let's go. Like, let's let's make this happen. I can never think of, like, a moment where I would need to go to a bar, order a drink, and then tell the bartender how much I dislike my wife. And, and, and my wife has asked me, like, why do you think that is? And I was like, I, I don't know. Maybe it's like. I don't feel trapped. I don't feel like, you know, I feel like everything, I can do whatever I want, be, yeah. you know, because we have an open dialogue about everything. Like she knows everything I'm thinking all the time. Like she knows everything about me. And um, it's because you pee on her daily. Well, so she doesn't get, know that. Get, That's my get, secret. You get that. Angie sets the bar up here. You now get that a, moment man. of angst what? out and you're like, okay, now I can move on. I had a, I had a comment yesterday. On, that is my secret. She doesn't know I pee on her. Yes, I know. I heard you. Yeah. Uh, so I, up a post on Facebook on the, the podcast Facebook page and this guy commented down below it and I don't know where he would have gotten this maybe it's the colors of the logo I don't know what it was but he's like what is this some sort of 
feminist garbage or something like that. And I was like, I don't know. Why don't you just watch it and find out? And these are typically the kind of conversations that we have. They're, there's, as she said, not a word that comes out of my mouth is anything near feminist. And, and not that I have any issue with it. It's that I'm not walking around worshiping her. I'm not walking around, like, not in the the ridiculous way. Like, right. I, I never talk poorly about her to anybody for any reason. I don't no. ever hear our dirty laundry. Even if we've had a massive fight or anything like that, I don't have those conversations with anybody. No. If they ask me how she's doing, I'm like, oh, yeah, we're great. You know, this and that. There's never anything negative because that's, that's your queen. Our, that's our business. Like, it's your queen, though. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, that's you be like, I don't know. That's like your prize. Yeah. Dude, it's your prize possession. Like, my wife is my prize possession. Like, I would never do anything to hurt her, harm her. Or, I say or, she's my trophy wife, and she's like, trophy trophy. Like, well, yeah. yeah. My wife's know. more of like my sex slave than my trophy, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have tried to see if we could get a sex slave. I think that would be cool. <laughs> Not just want to have sex with somebody else, but like think about how cool it would be if like we were able to cuddle in bed together and have like a sex slave just like do things to you. You know what I mean? Like we don't have to ruin that cuddly moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the cuddly moment. Like, we have a good conversation. It would be Isn't great that to have us. Is that considered a unicorn? When a married couple brings no in a third, that's... have you ever seen Spartacus? Oh, it's like it's, I get it from Spartacus. It's like a it was a series, like a Spartan series, but like the queen and the king would like be talking like this, and like they would both be having like somebody going down on each of them, and oh they're like talking God. business. Like it's super funny, and ridiculous, right? Like obviously, not, but I've always joked about it. I'm like, see, that's what I'm talking about. Like. Think about all the like good conversations that are just ruined because I'm trying to have sex with you. Like I can literally have somebody. <laughs> I don't even. I don't care what they look like. What, what can, good conversations are we having that well, are getting we, ruined? We talked about how I needed more arms. That way I could touch more groups of them. Yes. Yeah. You I, need one, I always you need needed, one arm. Like and you have like a slave that couldn't talk or anything. Mm -hmm. Like is is like mandated mm -hmm. by like the threat of being decapitated. <laughs> you know, like they would just have to sit there like do a good job of massaging your boobs. It's not even like sexual to him. He's just like. If he gets a boner, you kill him. He's your slave. You can do whatever you want. This is what was in Spartacus. Like, <laughs> that would be rad. <laughs> this is all she's going to talk about now. You want to do that, don't you? Um, dude, no, what man wouldn't want that? Or a woman, for that matter. Like, could you imagine? Like, you're like, he has to massage your shoulders. Like, you got some dude massaging your shoulders. Right? You guys are, like, having a regular conversation. Like, I could have lived in those Spartan times as a rich elite. It would suck to be the slave. It'd be cool to be the rich elite. <laughs> right, Ben? She's letting us know about the sex slave that he needs. <laughs> you should be here for this. Mm. We've had this conversation many, many times. Oh, I'm awesome. sure. You're probably spending the whole car ride here trying to convince her. Well, let's, let's, let's do it. While we're in Wilmington, we need to bring somebody back. Yeah, we need a number we need like a number sex. nine human trafficking spot yeah. in the world. Yeah, dude. I mean, like of age. Like, I want like a. Like a I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sneak out here real quick. I'm gonna do that for sure. Honey, you want to come back over here? Sorry, we have five kids, so go away, and get up and. Yeah, so it's about raising the army and mm -hmm. homeschooling, and why that decision was made, or how that decision was made. How did how did you guys come? You want to come over here, Ben? Was it, Where did she go? I think upstairs. How, um, how did how did you? You got more wine. Holy yeah, two more, shit. two more. Oh my god! What? That is so much wine. Yeah, I'm so fine. far, I'm the frosted fine. glass is my favorite. Yeah, I it's do a, like the frosted smoothest. glass one. I like this a little bit, but I don't think I could drink a lot. Sean Smith. I need to have to change positions and get locked. Okay. Oh, we've been sitting for a while. Is there a proper way to do this? I'm fucking it up right now. Um, no, no, uh, he's he's crunching. He's like, no, I, he's just like that's a Here, old wine. Show us an Italian one. No, there's. You can take the label off. You don't have to. You don't have to do the secret again. Um, there's, so there's, were they all Sauvignon blocks? Yes. Yeah, other than other than these last two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, this is an Italian wine, so. You know I'd have to guess if you're doing white wines. Yeah, this is one more. Boo! Hello! 
Right. Do you want to so I that? told them the um, the orgy story while you were gone, <laughs> which was like, and I called her like, so to finish the orgy story mm-hmm. before we go on to the family stuff, I, can, I, like, I got <laughs> home great segue. at like three o'clock in the morning. I get home and I wake her up and I'm like, I was like, wake up, wake up. And she's like, what, what, what? I was like, wake up. She's like, I'm awake, I'm awake. What's up? I was like, it was an orgy. And she was like, what? And I was like, it was, it was a real life. It was a real life orgy. She was like, no way. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, wait, wait, like, tell me about it. And so like, I tell her like all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, it's a fucking, it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, that's crazy. Like, I know we joked about it, but I didn't think it was actually going to be an orgy. And I was like, it was a fucking orgy. She's like, that's crazy. And she's like, so do you need to have sex? Now, I guess. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, probably. She's like, all right. And then we knocked it out and went to sleep. She's awesome. <laughs> I don't have any stories like that. <laughs> Not a single one, bro. Um, I mean, it was it was it was a fun experience to have a story to tell on a podcast like this. But like, honestly, I can officially say I will never partake in an orgy. Period. Like, that's a safe plan. Legit. Sounds good on paper, right? It would be like if I wasn't married, would I try? And I had a lot of money, like yeah. But then really? like, I saw it. I mean, before I saw it, it would have been. Possibility, Nothing but once I saw it, it she, she asked. She asked me. Actually, well, when I saw it in real life, it's not appealing. She asked me in one of our previous episodes. She's like, "That's what you want, isn't it? Another woman or multiple women?" I was like, "I can't even please you." So no. <laughs> I mean, I think every dude would take another woman, at least one. Like you could do one; that would be easy to manage. But like a group of a sea of people, fuck no, <laughs> like gross. But here, having to hear it for days and weeks and months and years on end that. There's no joy that sacrifice. You got to give up something. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do you remember that one time when we tried that thing? And yeah. You just never even touched me or you made eye contact for entirely too long. You just, you looked at them one time. Well, it's like a new toy. If you give a new yeah. toy to a child, like it's not going to play. It's still going to love the old toy, but it's definitely playing with the new toy for like three or four days before it goes back to the old toy. So like, it's There's a natural analogy. thing. There's your analogy. <laughs> but yeah. Um, no, for us, for kids, I don't know. Like what, uh, what made us go with, uh, five kids? Uh, well, we went with three for a long time and then five just kind of happened. Yeah. Is, is this, uh, like, do you guys want to have more? No, I, I, I think we're done. I think we're done. I feel like maxed out with the time that I have in the day and the amount of attention I can give each one. The having of the babies is great. Fine. We would do that forever, but. You know, once like you have this. them and you want to be able to really get to know each one and spend quality time with them, and I'm definitely old maxed says? out 11. 11 okay. So that's like 11 to seven months is a wide span of and caring for them for, yeah, their emotional needs, their personalities. Like, did that attribute to the homeschooling or was it oh, just the school knew. system sucked? It or? did. I, I was homeschooled, so I know I kind of always wanted to give it a go. And he, had the worst public school experience I've ever heard. And so he always wanted to give it a go to. So and, ours go to a charter school. Mm-hmm. So, and her mom actually works there too. So she's cool. intimately connected. Mm-hmm. She knows what's going on. She knows everything they're doing, mm-hmm. even without them telling them, you know, and I mean, my parents knew all the teachers of my school. I went to a massive high school in Indiana. Oh, okay. My parents knew every teacher, every professor they knew. Like my grandpa even had worked with one of my CAD professors like 30 years prior. Like they all, and I didn't even think we were babysitted, babysat at some point by some of our teachers. Like my parents <laughs> had hired them. They would go on vacation, Mexico or whatever. And they would be over there in our house for like a week babysitting us. And wow. So like moving down here and seeing that my reality isn't universal. Whereas she right. says we had completely different childhoods. I just now I'm like curious. I've never actually two of my cousins were homeschooled, but I've never even it's never even occurred to me that that I would ever want to do that if I had my own natural born kids. Yeah. She would love if we had a ton of money, a yacht in an RV and could just travel. Sure. You, you know, never said anything about a yacht. I, 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 the yacht. I would love to have an RV. I'd love to have an RV. Yeah. I think but I've I always said that there. if my children weren't at the school that they were at, homeschooling is what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. The, the I mean, just for me, like I felt like I was held back so much as a kid. I mean, I, I was I, I was like demonized as a child. I was the 
low man on the totem pole, like the unwealthy kid in a school full of wealthy children. It was a small school. I was the only kid that lived like, even though I lived in a pretty decent house, I lived in the middle of nowhere. And where I lived was amongst trailer parks. So when people were like, oh, you live there, they assume I must live in a trailer park. So I had no friends and it was very far for us to go to school. Again, we lived in the swamps of Florida. And, um, and so I didn't really get to have any friends. It was never like, I never fit in with anyone. And my parents like both worked pretty, pretty religiously. My mom spent a lot of time with me. They were good parents and everything. But like I was when ADHD came about in the nineties and it was the big craze. Like I was the poster child. I was like, this is the kid that has it. He's going to be put on all this medication. I refuse the medication. I don't know why. And I, and I tell the story all the time. It's why my company is called C minus media. Um, and the story goes with that was that uh, um, they wanted me to take this Ritalin and stuff. I didn't know what it was at the time. It's like in the early nineties. And I just, in my heart, I was, you know, uh, 13 years old, 12, maybe not even like 12, 13 years old. And I knew in my heart, I don't know what Ritalin is. I don't know what it does, but I'm not doing it. Like, it's not going to alter my brain. I'm not going to have my mind altered. I had that thought as a 12 year old, you're not going to alter my brain. And so it started with me getting prescribed this, my mom not being able to take it. My mom signed me up for like some kind of like, uh, like a psychologist. And I ended up having to go to the psychologist and the psychologist is trying to talk to me. I refuse to talk. Then it gets into my dad's hand. And my dad's like, what do you mean? He's not fucking taking me. Like, you're going to go, what? Like, no, this, you fucking take this medicine or I'll kill him. Like, those are his options. And so my dad would shove these pills down my neck. And then I would look him in the face and vomit him right back oh up. And he was like throwing me through closet doors. And like, we just had a terrible relationship during that time. And I hated him. And he hated me. And it, and it was really brutal. And so this led to like guidance counselors. And, and it was like all eyes were on me. Now, I never did anything wrong. I wasn't a bad kid. I had never had any problems. I was playing sports. No, like I had no problems that I can remember at that age until this Ritalin thing came about. So after the guidance counselors, everybody gets involved. Like I ended up like calling the cops, I think, on my dad for like hitting me or something like that, which was like stupid. I should never have done it. But uh, I ran away and, uh, you know, just stupid childish, like seventh grade shit. And so it ends up going to a, like I ended up going to a psychiatrist. Um, trying to figure out like now it's like a whole family thing. Like, why are you not like at this point? I'm not talking to my mom, I'm not talking to my dad. I'm 13 years old, I'm recluse. Like, my whole life has changed. I quit baseball, I quit doing everything around me. I was going to the woods, I would get off the bus and just go right into the woods, get as far back in the woods as I can, and wait till it was almost dark. I would come out of the woods and go to the house. Like, it was a weird existence for me in that time. And so, I go to the psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist talks to me, and um. And they're like, you know, what, what is so bad about this drug that you don't want to take it? And I can't articulate it. And so he made a deal. He said, um, and my dad was there and he said, if you, you know, we're not, we're going to finish out this nine weeks because it's almost over. But we'll let you go with no drugs, no nothing for the next nine weeks. And if you can make A, B, honor, make A's and B's, then we'll never talk to you about taking this drug again. But if you don't make A, B, honor, the next nine weeks, you're going to take it for nine weeks and just see how it goes. And my dad chimes in. He goes, if he made A.B. Honor, I'll buy him a dirt bike. And my parents had no money. And I was like, bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I was like, I'll get the dirt bike. So I cut out this piece of paper of this dirt bike. I tape it to my desk. My teacher, who just fucking hated me. And there's a whole story about that. She removes it every day. She, like, all of a sudden, she now wants me to, like, be a failure. She, she never had a problem with me until, like, I didn't want to take this Ritalin. So this was, like, a new special ed class for like ADHD kids and yet you sat with these blinders on your desk like this big thing so you couldn't see anything you couldn't be distracted like those test taking like a, yeah like a cubicle. hardboard cubicle yeah. but all day like you were in a cubicle it would like be the worst thing they would know now I would hope right like kids who <laughs> so I ended up like just busting my ass I mean all A's in one B and that nine weeks and my my dad did buy me a dirt bike and um and that was the end of it I made all A's and one B and, and then I vowed, after they gave me the dirt bike, I said, you can take the dirt bike away. You can do whatever you want. I will never. Now, I said this in seventh grade. I will never make another A or B the rest of my life. It lasted through my senior year of high school where I was in physical education, PE. And I would not bring socks to get negative five points for not having white socks because you had to have white or black socks for PE. I would purposefully wear 
miscolored socks or funky, wacky church socks to get negative five points so that I could be sure that I made a C because I like PE. I like playing basketball and tennis and all the things, but I didn't want to make an A or B. Still, from seventh grade to day, I, I never once said she, she found one of my report cards and it was straight D's. And she was <laughs> like, What? Well, I was like, Oh, that was my 11th grade year. I wanted to see if I could make straight D's. And she said, Why well, do you get a D in PE? And I told her how I got a D. And she's like, And your mom kept this? And I said, Yeah, I mean, it's pretty oh. fucking hard to give some fucks and not give any fucks. Like D's much harder than C's or F's. You know, and that was why that's why I named my company C minus media because I vowed in seventh grade that I would never make another A or B the rest of my life because you guys f- put me in a position to do it. And so I made all A's and a B, and I'll never make another C. I'll never make another A or B the rest of my life. And I didn't. And and I held that ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade, and I never my parents gave up. Like they didn't give a fuck. Like they yeah. just you know, and I have a great relationship with my parents now. Um but I was uh I uh up until high school, I basically was a straight A student. I would, in middle school, I fucked around a little bit, but like once I got to high school, because the majority of my friends to begin with were older anyway, so they already had cars. You know, they, we were already we were already doing all kinds of nonsense, smoking weed, you know, all that kind of stuff. And <clears throat> the school that I went to, if you played in a sport of any kind, if you played football, basketball hockey, anything, the, the staff just loved you. You could yeah. get away with almost anything. I mean, at one point, my my CAD professor, <coughs> this is going to have trouble getting by. Sorry, I'm... Um, this dude, the, the guy that I said had worked with my grandpa like 30 years prior, I could show up in class, to, to his class specifically, and be like, hey, uh, remember on Tuesday when I stayed late because I was working on something I hadn't finished? Can you sign this? Realistically, I was skipping whatever yeah, the yeah. class was. They still sign it. Yeah, he would. He would sign that I was in his classroom doing some extra work or fixing a project or something like that. I was still passing this class, but I didn't fucking want to be there. I would be there for my tests, my quizzes. Yeah. I would ignore everything else. We would leave, come and go, because a lot of our um, like the the college classes that I took were off high school campus, so we more or less were able to come and go. We would leave. We would arrive at certain times you would do like half days at one location half days at the other the college classes they were like gentlemen's course essentially like is what i related to military training um as long as you're there and you do your work there's no real other rules so in between i would like go home eat lunch at the house and then go to school after that or whatever my schedule was that specific day and my parents had just divorced a little bit prior to that and i had a big falling out with my dad so i was getting away with anything yeah but i was still making good enough grades the teachers loved me they loved my family so i was the kid this is why she's like we had a totally different upbringing her dad she bought her she bought herself a laptop with her own money and her dad snapped in half because he didn't want them to have anything in their house whereas i had computers, dirt bikes. My dad was pretty well off at the time. We had an RV. We had a cabin. We vacationed here. My grandparents lived here. So like we did all these things. And then she's like, yeah, I was like dirt poor. And I mean, but growing up and in the area that I grew up in around Notre Dame, like I never even actually felt well off. I thought we were actually lower middle class. I, I knew that we weren't poor, poor because we still would do like, we would take gift baskets to like, my friends that like their families were yeah. know, poor, like for Christmas and stuff like that. And that never even clicked with me until I was an adult. I was like, Oh man, I bet they were fucking ashamed to know that I knew. And right. then now they know that I'm not because I'm the one bringing it. Right. Yeah. But did, did anything like that ever happen? Did you ever have anything brought to you, your family? Did, was that even a, a program in this area? I'm sure it is, but my parents don't. Too proud to apply kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't say too proud to apply, but of the mindset we both work, we are able to keep the lights on and a roof over. Our head. We're not hands. going to ask for anything that's, else. That's yeah. kind of how I feel. Like sometimes I look at our bills and I'm like, "Dude, we're fucking poor." And then other times I'm like, I'm "Not asking anybody for anything." <laughs> we're not even poor. It's just everything's fucking expensive. Well, 
And, you know, every time the prices go up for uh, services that my company uses, and then I have to go and tell my clients, hey, this one up. You know, I have to raise my drink price. And you're like, man, such and such for that? And you're like. You make your own alcohol. Why would <laughs> And you're like, dude, my clerks went up 7%. Rappers went up 3%. Labels went up 5%. Glass went up 7% from China. Um, and you can't really get American made glass because the waiting list is too long. They're more expensive anyway. But like all this goes up. I mean, what, what, what other option do I have? I'm making dirt. I'm, I'm making dollars on a pop. You know, so it's like, and people are like, well, yeah, but you're still selling a whole bunch. Am I? How much do you think I fucking sell? Is it possible to recycle your own bottles and your own product if, if people brought them back to you? I you? mean, maybe. I don't know. I think it'd be more trouble than it's worth. You have to clean the bottle, sanitize it, come up with a new number on the bottom, uh, track it. The law numbers on it. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Yeah. I'm telling you, the regulations in the beverage industry are stupid. I can, I can only what know. about a resale station within your distillery well, like, where, where they bring their own in glasses? In Europe, they have wine fountains. That's kind of what I was thinking. You know, you can just take that your, existed. You could take your vat, like in Spain, the, you, they have like a fountain in the middle of this. Italy has it too. And you could take your bottle and stick it in the fountain and it'll fill it up with wine. It's not very good wine, it's stable, but it's part of their culture. It's part yeah. of, you can't eat the food without having the wine. It's like water, you know? So, which yeah, I wish we had that culture bowl. here. But we don't, you know, wine is again, we're doing a pretentious status yeah. thing, which is, it's not like that around the world. Like wine is just a part of your life and, and nobody's offended. If you break out a charcuterie board with a $6 bottle of wine, nobody cares in Europe. Do you know what I mean? Cause it's not really about the wine. Like it's about the company. It's about, you know, you know so it's about the conversation that comes with, it. right. You know, the wine's not the start of the show where it's here. It's like, I bought this really good. I don't know if this is a good bottle of wine. I mean, I paid twenty five dollars for it. I mean, I don't know if it's good or not, but I paid twenty five dollars for it. But I mean, I don't know. If it's, it's, it's California. I paid twenty five dollars for it. That's like they care so much about how much they pay for the bottle of wine. It's just kind of like, calm down. Yeah. Who cares? Like how much you paid for the fucking wine? Like, I didn't even ask you how much you paid for the wine. What was the most expensive bottle that we've had thus far? Um, well, I'll I actually a, think this one. I'll take a guess. I mean, the one with the cork rather than the screw yeah. cap. Yeah, well, that one's DOC, which is Denomination Origin Controllato, which is like a Italian. Uh, it's a seal of approval by the. It means like the denomination, which would be the town. And it was not my favorite bottle. So then it's control. Well, it's old world. It's old world. So remember, I told you, like new world, you're gonna always know. Like you'll say lemon, orange, grapefruit. Old world, you're gonna be like straw. No, because we're talking about white wine, straw, grass, hay. Mm. It's all these like weird green, mm. earthy notes. Love, love a good straw. <laughs> I, I genuinely, I really like this. That's what but you think about like old world food. Old world food isn't all that flavorful. Like if you go and have spaghetti in Italy, you're. It's That's not like true. spaghetti in Whatever. America where we have a whole love, bunch of herbs. I love a good spaghetti. Yes. No, I, I, I like that, but. I because I, I don't really care too much for the the bite. I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly, but I, I it's not that I want it to be smooth. It can be acidic, but there's there's something specific about some wines that it almost makes me feel like a diabetic. It makes me feel sick to my stomach. Damn. And it's not even it's not I even, mean like some people will say like lactose in wine, which comes from like how much oak. Has there's lactobacillus in there? Yeah. People that are lactose intolerant or whatever can like have stomach issues with it. Um, I, I don't know necessarily that. But I, I mean, like, I think the question like, do you like grapefruit? Like some people don't like cantaloupe. Yeah. Can you explain why you don't like cantaloupe? No, you just know you don't fucking like it. Well, right. there are a lot of white wines that have melon or cantaloupe taste characteristics, and we just ran through all these Sauvignon Blancs, which is all grapefruit. No matter what Sauvignon Blanc you go to in the world, you'll always be able to pick out grapefruit. It's, it's the easiest grapefruit on It's funny field. that I didn't know that, but I've always loved grapefruit, so maybe that's why. Right, I'm so if you like grapefruit, them. but if you don't like grapefruit, then you're pretty much not going to like any Sauvignon Blanc on the plant. How did, how did you consume grapefruit growing up? Did you consume it straight out of the fruit yes. with a little scoopy spoon, or did you cover Listen. it in sugar like my brother? No, I've, I've never had it in sugar, and I also don't cut it in half. I peel it and peel all the membranes what? off and get it individually. We, have those, we, we have cut those it in half, sprinkle sugar on yep. it, and then use a little spoon nope. to soak yep. it out. Yep. No, you, you desecrated the corn. <laughs> what about cottage cheese? 
I no, never, I will show you a woman who desecrated the grapefruit. Have you ever seen the grapefruit girl? No. That's that sounds like she Yeah, it sounds blood. like a porno. <laughs> it's this black woman. She doesn't do porn. But she developed a technique of blowing a dude with a grapefruit. And so she cuts a grapefruit and like she cuts the cap off and the end cap off. So you just left with the center of grapefruit. So you have two grapefruit. She cuts a hole in the grapefruit. She puts the grapefruit over the wiener. And she makes the most insane noise. I will show it to you later. She's explained this on the news, like on talk on shows. On the news? Like on talk shows. Like she was kind of famous, like in the early 2000s. But she does this. Like it's so funny. It became like this growing meme over the while. It's hilarious. I'll show you. But it's called, it's, it's called Grace. Isn't that movie Good Luck Chuck or whatever? Where he like. Oh, does he? I, I never saw so. it. Oh, but it's know. called great. It's called grapefruiting. Is what this woman came up with. It's it's, it's grapefruiting. And it's for like women who don't like giving pages. Interesting. Hmm. I have never heard of that. I'm gonna say right now. I don't want a grapefruit around my. Way. It seems like it would it's, burn. Yeah, that's. Good. She swears it doesn't. But I guess as long as you don't have herpes, then I guess you're in the clear. But otherwise, great. I guess that would be a way to know if somebody's got something. All of a sudden, they're screaming like, oh, okay, G glad I'm not down there. Right? Oh. I'm a big, I'm a, like, I'm, I'm afraid of STDs too. Terrified. I'm a quality over quantity guy. Yeah. You fucked a married woman. Not on purpose. Not on purpose. Well, you were in the military. That mm -hmm. kind of comes with the territory. Like, I, mean, I actually didn't do it in the military that I know of. Oh. I did it since I've lived here. Oh. Oh, you were married? It was before well, me. No, yeah. oh. It was before me. It was the year before me. My wife's been with a married dude. That she knew about? Yeah. I was in the middle of getting a divorce. Ah, uh, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. I was getting a divorce. So I, so I was married I was married in my early I married the girl I lost my virginity to. I was that guy, my high school Aww. sweetheart. And then she cheated on me while I was gone in the military. Got pregnant. Yeah, that sucks. No, thanks. But I got rid of her at like 23 or 24, and then I met her. I still wasn't technically divorced. Because like when you separate, when you're 23, you just separate and just kind of like, I'll get divorced whenever I want. That's why I never took anything, any relationship or anything seriously in the military, because I knew I was going to PCS, or I was eventually going to ETS, and I was going to go back home, back to where I was from. I, I hate when people call where they're from home. This is just a personal right. anecdote for me because I, after I went back, I, I, I wanted to go back. I wanted to go back because I wanted to see my friends. I wanted right. to be with my family and stuff like that. And I went back and went to college and I was like, people suck. No, I was the same way. I, I can't go back to San. I was born yeah. and raised in San Augustine, Florida. Yeah. I can't go back. Yeah. I go back and I'm like, what a shithole. So, like everybody's doing the same shit, sleeping with the same fucking people. Yep. Meanwhile, I'm born and raised here. I have no desire to leave. But you, yeah, but you, you, you are not. Well, like the same special. You're not like the same kind of person I'm talking about, though. We're talking about the people that always have had dead end jobs. They have always ran with the same crew. They've always like they they rotate. Mm -hmm. One guy will date this girl, and then she right, goes the on his friend, and then his friend, and then his friend, and then they're back. The story that we talked about. Even know anybody like that. The story that we talked about the other day. Where people will have like a fight or a breakup or whatever. Dude, we're going through that right now. Like, I grew up with this girl, super good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. I grew up with this, these two other guys. One guy I like, one guy I didn't like. Grew up with them. She married the guy I didn't like. <clears throat> Crazy. My parents are in town right now. She's like, I was like, yeah. So how are so and so and so and so doing? I heard they had another kid. She's like, well, so and so cheated with the guy that I did like. <laughs> And I'm like, wait, and he's married with four kids. Oh, and my I'm like, God. So, and my thing is, is like, sh the guy that I like, he's married to a very wealthy girl. Yeah. Mm. And I'm like, how's that going to work out? Because she's got all the money. Yeah. So, I mean, she's going to have the house. She's going to have all the shit. And keep the kids. I mean, wow, dude. Like, I don't know. Mm. I would never. That's the only thing I can honestly say I'll never do. It's cheat. I mean, I'll call her and tell her. Like, I'm about to sleep with this chick. No, just kidding. I'm just joking, babe. But I am like, because you confident. warned her, it doesn't count as cheating. <laughs> right. I'm just kidding. Just hoping for permission. Yeah, give me a permission. I will never cheat 
I don't, I just, I cannot fathom how any dude, I can, like, I can see the lustfulness or like the want or whatever. I can see the desire, but like, don't you know that's going to be overpowered by like this guilt. guilt and like how much pressure, like, I would be like, dude, she's going to smell it. She's going to, she's going to smell, I'm going to smell different. Like, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to look at like, it would be true. only my it brain, smell different probably, after. you know, like, I would be so, I would know that she's going to know. And I know that I'm going to tell her. I knew instantly after my ex-husband did. One, dude, one crazy. Of the, one, I would know. One of the things that we're talking about with her, even not just cheating, but committing any crime at all, is how, I don't even understand why people even think that they can get away with anything anymore. Your vehicle's tracking you. Your phone's tracking you. Everyone has doorbell cameras. Everyone has other cameras. If they don't have it, their neighbor has it. Like right. all of, everybody here, not even just in this neighborhood, my old house, my neighbor would call me up if we were out of town or something, and he would say, "Hey, um, somebody's somebody's here in your driveway. Are you ex in, expecting anybody?" Yeah, and if you go get a hotel, she's gonna know that you got a hotel. She's gotta yeah. give a credit card. Right. Like, dude, I just could never. And then, like, if I, like, try to get passionate with her and be like, oh, I love you so much. Like, all I'd be thinking about is, fuck, I cheated on you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it would just be, it would ruin me. So, even if I was, like, tempted, all the thoughts of, like, the negative of doing it mm -hmm. would be, like, yeah, look, I think it would be cool to fuck you for, like, five minutes. But then afterwards, it would just suck forever. So, I'm just not going to fuck you. What do they call But hold on, let me call my wife. Like, just in case, like, maybe she's cool with it. In that case, maybe we can keep this thing going. Let me call her. And she's going to say no. And I'm going to be like, never mind. She said it. Here, here's how they call and go with her. Hey, babe, uh, what do you think? Okay, your stuff will be on the front porch when you get here. Don't knock. What would you say? You say no. I would say no. Yeah. I could just see you saying no. She would have all my shit packed and you'd be out there. It wouldn't even be a conversation. It's She'd yeah. be like, send me a picture. No. I avoid all conflict, so yeah, just I don't want to ever deal with anything. Leave, leave, the key, leave the key under the mat, you know, like that kind of stuff. Everything is outside. You don't even have to come yeah. in. I'm just going to do it, man. But like, you know, I know so many dudes, um, especially because I was a police officer, yep. you know, and it's crazy. I told my wife all the time, man, it's like crazy how many dudes just cheat on their wives and like, they're cool with it. They're like, fine with it. They're like, yo, did you hook up with that waitress last night? Mm -hmm. And you're like, you know, like we all had dinner with and these are guys on the family. force. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. we all just had dinner with like all of our families. Mm -hmm. Like if you were cheating family. on Nona and like, we're not even like huge, like bestie friends or whatever. Yeah. Like I don't see you outside of a podcast realm or work realms or, you know, but like if you were like, yo dude, like I hooked up with this chick at the drinking brush Friday, I'd be like, I would literally say to your face, I'd be like, bro, that's kind of fucked up. You, you got to tell them all about it. Yeah. And you were like, no, I'd be like, dude, you should probably, Fix your shit. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to celebrate it. Yep. I'm not going to be like, dude, that's fucking, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, no, no. You know what I mean? I'm, like, I it's crazy. That. I was at, um, but like, when I was like, like police force, that's the way it was. more prevalent for men on the force because that's, that's yeah. my impression with firefighters and police here in this area and specifically. Nurses. Yes. And it's with, well, it's it's no with other it. first responders. <laughs> yeah. Especially. Um, I had a sex therapist on my podcast. Um, tell you. She's a first responder, sex therapist. Okay. Um, so she's a sex therapist for first responders only. Yes. Okay. Like probably hired by a city. Okay. Right. Like like most of these will have like an anger management therapist. They'll have like right. Uh, this is this is a whole new realm for me. Okay. Like they probably had a an but, incident. Well, I, yeah. I mean, well, I'm sure probably most cities have like an alcoholics therapist. So, you know, okay. big cities, you know, right. but anyway, she was on my show and, um, and, and so she thinks the reason is, is just because of like that. A lot of the guys that she's interviewed or whatever, they're living in the red, like they're living in this constant, like uh, adrenaline. adrenaline, like danger. Right. And right. so what's the, one of the most dangerous things you can do cheating, cheating, right? Like you get that. Oh my God. We're meeting is so there's a lot of times it wasn't really about, emotional right. it was more about like feeling this like right, like skydiving for them right, right. which it's hard for somebody like me to understand because romance and sex and everything for me is is, is, is very much like emotional and mm -hmm. you know just because the way i was raised religiously you know so like i know that 
I couldn't just sleep with somebody. And, like, I couldn't have one. I've never had a one-night stand. I don't think it's possible for me to have a one-night stand, even if my wife died of, like, some kind of crazy cancer. I wouldn't go off and have a one-night stand. I mean, maybe I would, but I wouldn't like it. You know, it'd be... I've never done the rebound. It's not very natural. It's not a natural thing for me. So, um, but, you know, she was explaining that a lot of the the guys that, that do this, she thinks are doing it for, like, some kind of a genre. But, you know, being in the force and things like that, there were... And, and I'm, I'm not saying that I was immune to the celebration of it, right? Like, I was guilty back then of being like, dude, you bang that waitress? What? Not like, bro, that's fucked up. Because I was too young of a rookie. I didn't want to be chastised. I mean, I didn't physically think of this consciously think of it but i was like it wasn't my place so i wanted to be cool mm -hmm. so i would be like dang that's crazy even though inside i'm like man it's pretty fucked up now that i'm older i'm 40 and you know more i don't want to say successful but i've done a lot more things i'm like a little bit more mature now if anybody comes to me and is like i'm banging somebody else on the side of my life, i'll call you out i don't care how cool you are or how rich you are i'll be like dude that's pretty fucked up why would you tell me that you one, know like one of her best friends for years was doing that and she was basically trying to parent this girl right. and you know she would she would come to nona proud telling her all oh, these yeah. stories all these details and then nona of course would tell me yeah and i'm and i consider myself to be one of the most loyal in general people hmm. brand loyal people right. loyal like she's like the, those people don't even like him like well i think they're my friend and she's like right. They talk shit about you behind your back. Okay, whatever. I don't care. Right. And yeah, but this this woman for the longest time would come to her and tell her all these stories. I'm like, fuck her. Yeah. Ditch her. Yeah. It's making you miserable. Yeah. You're telling me all this stuff, and all it's doing is pissing me. Like, I want to go I and mean, expose all these years, people. Man. I had a friend yeah. that would like bring his girlfriends to our house. You know, and my wife would hate it. You know, but I was like, no, like, I want to be cool with this guy. Bro. You know, but you no, know, now I'm old enough and. Wise enough that I would be like, dude, that's don't bring that around my house. Don't bring that girl around here. I don't want to see her. Like, it's not cool. You shouldn't be doing this with your wife. But I think it's because of my time in the military, my time in the police force, I'm like numb to it. I mean, I would say, like, what do you think, Bailey? Like 90% of the dudes I know cheated. 95%. I mean, a lot. I mean, it's like all my friends have cheated. I've never done it. I never will. Um, I can confidently say I never will. Um, I never will, but that's because he would literally murder me no. before I even I mean, thought about it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, it, for me, it's like I, I, I've just I've been around it so much. And, you know, I mean, I'd like to think that. I mean, I, I guess, like, we're her and I are in a relationship now, 14 years in. Like, it's hard for me to even think about it because I don't think we would. We don't have time. We have five kids that are. We're, we're following around three sponsored skateboarders for one of these big giant events. Like, right? If you so, went MIA for even two hours, she'd be like, "Like, who's gonna watch? You know, I like, can't who's even gonna watch the kids. You right. know, so like, I can't even imagine which what she would do if she was cheating. I can't even surprise her because if I'm gone for any duration or if I have any specific child with me, right? She already knows. Oh, he's going here, here, here. He's buying this, this, right. and this, and he's gonna come back with all of it at this exact time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't it, know, intuition. It, it, in my mind, though, I'm like, oh, this is going to be it's awesome. Huge. Yeah, yeah. Well, I threw a 40th birthday party for a guy. And um, he was about to get married. I think they were engaged. And um, I, this is the first time I met the new fiance or whatever, because this is military friends. And um, so she was already a little bit jealous of me that I'm planning this 40th birthday. She's the fiance. And so. Like she felt like maybe it's her responsibility. You know? right. So I already had this like weird dynamic with her. And um, I had set up a venue and I had all these like guys flying in from all around the United States to be at this uh, 40th birthday party, you know. And she really wanted to be involved. So I started giving her things to do so she could feel like she was involved. Well, unbeknownst to me, my buddy was picking up on her shady disappearing. You know, she was calling me from my, I was calling her to plan this thing from my work phone, which he didn't have in his phone. And uh, and so like he's seeing this weird number coming from, from me to her. 
and we're doing these texts that's back and forth we're trying to like really hire he's a detective so it's like uh, it's really uh, hard you know and um ends up to i fly into surprise they pick me up she picks me up from the airport and she's like i don't know what we're gonna do and i was like what and she was like he just broke up with me and i was like what and she was like you were texting about picking you up from the airport <gasps> like i didn't want to blow the surprise i didn't get a chance and he fucking left me so i ended up having to track him down wherever he was wow reel him in and be like dude look at all here's all the messages like it was me the whole time like we're trying to play in this whole thing i couldn't do it from her phone i mean i couldn't do it from my phone because every time i texted her you might it would light up with my name and you'd be like what's eric texting you about so i started texting from my work phone to like not throw you off and he ended up like crying and like he's like dude i'm just so thoughtful i can't believe i like <coughs> Bailing and stuff, and I'm like, so, so, fuck, dude. So next time I'm get with her because she successfully threw a surprise birthday party for me a couple years ago. I've never even had a birthday party. My birthday is Christmas Eve. So oh yeah, I've always had the Christmas party that's right. Andrew gets extra presents. At. Right. I've never actually had it until then. She even tried to throw one when we went back to Indiana to visit my family oh, and friends. Yeah, with the but there, there was a blizzard. blizzard. It was 33 right. below zero. Everything Every, was shut down. Yeah. So, yeah. um. Yeah, had never had it happen. She successfully got away with it twice. I never even knew. Nobody said Wait, anything. Wait, so you're implying that if I can get away with throwing you a party, then no. I can get away with cheating? No. That's no. what he's implying. No, no, no. I, no. I'm saying next time you want to throw a party for somebody, ask Call her. her. Yeah, yeah, ask her for how to do it. Um, I no. mean, I think that's like that's why it's important. Like, if you're in a relationship, okay. it's like if your partner knows that you're 100 percent honest. And like, look, sometimes the truth sucks. Like my wife and I have had some really weird conversations in 14 years, but like nothing's off the table. Like if we're feeling a certain way, if you watching a movie or you're, you're wanting something or you're, you know, like there's nothing, not saying that we partake in anything, but like there is not up there. I know what she's thinking a hundred percent of the time. She knows what I'm thinking. We've had, we're not, but now like, I feel like we could talk about anything. I could talk about, and we went to a strip club with a bunch of people. We're not strip club people. Yeah. Um, oh, this was before we had five kids, but uh, I think we still had like two. We had a babysitter for the night. We ended up, ended up at the strip club, and because of the group of people you that we went with, pay me to go to the strip club here. Oh, no, no way. I mean, this was this was you know ten years ago, but you know she ended up buying me a lap dance to be funny, and because she knew that I would feel like awkward about it and all these other things, and so she would make like when I joke, she was like, "I know you, and you, I, you know you." What did she smell like? And I was like, <laughs> what? And she was like, you know, with your wine shit that you were smelling her and that you knew exactly what she smells like. And I'm like, fuck. What did she smell like? Oh, it's like fucking just dis- like uh, um, Axe body spray. Like it's like, no, do you, trash. Do you remember um, Ross and Jesse's friend, Brooke? That was in yeah. it. Brooke, she's uh, great. Yeah. So she, she lives on Limited. Yeah. She lives right across. She yeah. lives over by Cooper's friend. That's yeah. the one that I said. I know somebody lives in this neighborhood. I, I, I would have to drive around forever because I've only been there one time. Right. But that night, because that party kept dragging on, and I was like, I'm heading out. Yeah. And she was talking to somebody, and she was like, Hey, would you be able to give me a ride? And I was like, Sure. Where do you live? And she's like, Well, I'll just tell you. So I, I drop, and I live in Leland. So right. I went completely out of my way. So I drop her off, and then I go back, and I get this weird text from Dan. Hey, what happened with Brooke? And I was like, dude, you know what's funny? As uh, she drove home with us when I was in Austin mm-hmm. from a thing. Same thing. I got a call like immediately. Like, hey, what's up with Brooke? And I was like, from the same person that she he just said? Yeah. Hopped off at the hotel. I, I could probably. So find what's going on between them? Nothing. Like, I, 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 that was the first time I had ever met this woman. Okay, I didn't even. Well, you both got phone calls regarding her from the same person. I'm something's sure something's going. up, Maybe. but I didn't know because I didn't know that it happened is, twice. Or they, is, or they were suspicious of is, us. Is Dan married? No, no this, I don't know any of these people, by the way. So, so I'm trying to piece it together. So this was what four, almost four years ago when I met you, right? Or going on? It was 2019, right? Is that right? 2020. Sorry, yeah, no yeah, idea. Well, I met him in 2020 when you introduced me to him. So it's 2019. Yeah, right. yeah. That, you, yeah. you made it out like you'd known him for longer yeah. than. I mean, I knew him well, from from that. I've known him in Drinking Bros yeah. probably longer than he's known me. Because I was in Drinking Bros and he was a moderator. Yeah. And I knew all the moderators, but the moderators probably didn't know who I was. But I knew who Drew, I knew who you were. I tried with your Ranger updates. Yeah. 
but yeah, so I, I, there was nothing, nothing malicious. Didn't even barely knew this woman. She knew that I was leaving, asked me if I could drop her off. It never even occurred to me that it was going to be out of my way. Right. I was just like, yeah, sure. Whatever. So I drop her off. I go home and then Dan's being really weird about it. I was like, I don't know, man. I was like, she asked me for a ride and I dropped her off. And yeah, that's weird. that was kind of the end of it. Did but, he like assume that you must have cheated or something? I, I wasn't dating anybody at the time. Oh. So I, I don't know. I, but I mean, that was the same call I got. Like, and the way it got to work with us was like, Hey, I've had way too much to drink. Can you make sure I get home safely? Yeah. And I was like, what? She was like, can you make sure I get home safely? And I was like, uh, yeah, what hotel you're at? And she's like, this one. I was like, all right. So I ordered a Uber to go to her hotel and then to my hotel. Mm-hmm. And I, there was another dude in there with us. Um, we dropped her off at the hotel. Went back to our hotel. I mean, there was nothing weird. She didn't bite us up. Nothing. I mean, she just, just a normal, like, we try to get home safe. She mm-hmm. was fine. She was cool as shit. And literally, I got a call like that next morning, like, hey, did, did she leave with you? Yeah, she asked if we get home. And they're like, did you go to her place? I was like, no. So you drove her to her place and you dropped her off. I was like, is she okay? Like, so what is her involvement with drinking bros? She's really good know. friends with. I think I actually think that one of Maybe their was one trying of, to protect her or something. I, I, I think she was a neighbor of Ross and Jesse, oh, one okay. of their houses over here. I, I never met her husband. I don't know. The, the whole getting phone calls after dropping off that is somebody who fucking her on the down low <laughs> would. Do you also, to find out, like, oh, you guys had a fight, so I'm not going home with you. I, I, I didn't get that vibe. I didn't get like she was fighting with anybody. Yeah, I, no, 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 no. I mean, like, there's there's but, more to the story. Of, like, yeah, maybe he likes her. Yeah. Mm, you know? What What's the time period for your story? When did it yeah, happen? Yeah, when did it happen? 2021, 2022. Okay, that's like two years after yours. Yours is probably like, what, 2019? Mine's the night that I met Tansy up there. At- I kind of took it as, like, She's married and her husband didn't come, and they're oh, trying she's to make married? sure. Yeah. And they're trying to make sure that she's. Not, I didn't know that. Oh, sorry. They're, they're trying to. You, the no part of the story. Did you guys say that she was married? Sorry. No. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, the the only other things that I know are that they're huge LSU fans. I think yeah. they're from Louisiana originally, or or lived there. I know that she travels a lot by herself without him. Yeah, I don't. I I, I don't know. I, I feel don't fucking know her. I, I kind of feel like maybe no. They live in a really nice house. Maybe he's a cop. I got a vibe that they were trying to protect her. Yeah. And make sure that drinking bros dudes weren't being scumbags. And yeah. And that's what I got. That was the vibe I got, but I didn't know it happened more than once. They didn't really But I just assured them that I wasn't a dirtbag. And I was like, I'm, I I mean, I didn't go up to her room. I didn't go, I didn't get out of the car. Like, I don't even think we talked on the ride in. Like, I think she just said, like, thank you, maybe, you know, I'm really drunk. I think her exact words were, I'm really drunk. Can you make sure I get to my hotel? Okay. And I was like, yeah. I'll get us an Uber. We're going back to our place. What hotel are you at? She was like, bam. And I was like, great. That was what it. city yeah. were you in? Austin. Yeah. And um, I think I sat in the front seat. And she sat in the back seat with the other dude that I was with that was going to my hotel because we stayed in the same hotel, me and this other guy. Um, but neither one of us had like any interest in her. And um, but yeah, we got a call. I was like, yo, mm-hmm. you just dropped yeah, her off. Very I'm like, suspicious. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, pretty, I don't care if he's banging her, he's banging her. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm, me. I'm pretty sure. I knew, I knew she was married, and I think I knew details about her husband at the time, but I forgot it since. And I think he's actually the closer friend with Ross and Dan, and I think she's a better friend with Jesse. Yeah, I have no idea. And I think it was just the, why did you leave with our friend? Yeah, that's kind of the vibe I got. Yeah. It's like, like you. Like so you just like like I was trying to do something nefarious, and I was like, yo, listen. You know, but to circle doing. back. You were in Austin as a podcaster on their show, correct? Yeah, but it was a big podcast meetup. Mm-hmm. The so they have big meetups all around the country, and everybody flies in and does these big meetups, and and, and they pay for it. They pay for the rooms and everything. So okay. I flew in and uh, we did a live show. I did two live shows with them, okay. and she was at both of them. And then we all went out um, to various bars, and there was like, oh, I don't know. 150 people that go to these things. These are all just Plus, fans? Fans, hosts. Remember remember, I was telling you that it's a huge community. Eventually we'll reach a point where like we'll have like fan art or somebody will send us something and they'll be like, I'll redesign your logo. Or like a lot of those people like to show up as well because yeah. 
they want to be involved. They want to meet the people. Sometimes they're cool. You know, sometimes actually, they're weird. I actually don't even remember. That was, I think that was the chili cook-off. Was that oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't even remember why or how I met anybody or what anybody did. I just remember you were making, no, it wasn't chili cook-off. It was the uh, campaign thing. Okay. Camp, and you were making drinks for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. He was he was making uh, uh cocktails. Yeah, but what, root beer floats. Yeah, that and then there was the other one, the uh what's, Mules? what's the what's the I Christmas drink that I can't think of? Oh, hot butter rum. Sure. Mules or the cranberry punch? Uh no, uh, what, what what is it? Eggnog. Oh eggnog, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your huh? favorite drink ever. You couldn't remember. <laughs> yes. I make a lot of cocktails. Too. You know how good my memory is. That was he, a crazy he night. He loves eggnog, yeah. so that's that was a cr- that was a crazy night. That was yes. another night that I that they asked me if I went home with somebody. I was like, nope, did not go home with anybody that night. Yeah, no, I, I just went home alone and sober because I was making drinks for everybody. So I didn't drink. But yeah, and it wasn't the same girl. It was a different girl. They, I guess a different girl disappeared, went home with somebody. And, uh, they, they were figuring I'm, out who she was with, but they were so, like, hey, did so-and-so go home with you? And I was like, no. And I left at like 8 p.m. So... I was out for all of y'all. I remember being, I was on the set. They were asking me, so Jake. But I mean, that's Jake, the way these things are. I think they, they, they don't want them to be like these people meeting up for the first time. They, I don't think, I don't think Dream of Us wants them to be fucking and stuff. Yeah. I think it happens. And I think they're trying to figure out who's doing what so they know who to invite the next time and who not to invite. Like, I don't think they really like that. Like, I, I, don't, I know Jesse's not down with it. Yeah. Like, they're not there to ruin lives. I mean, she seems like a very, I mean, I've been to every one. I've been to like a million meetups and. They've never been anything but like extremely nice and professional and yeah. I, I just remember um and I might be I might be mixing up two events still, but I remember JT was at one of them. And I was in there and they were talking about Ross and I's bet with Michigan and Ohio State. And JT asked if I would do the diaper bet, and I was like, Yeah, and Ross was like, No. What is the diaper bet? The loser has to change the soil diaper of the winner. And I was like, fuck you, yeah, I'll do it. And Ross was like, nope, nope, nope. And I just remember, like, I was in there, and, like, we were just talking about that. And then they were like, oh, we need you to get out of here because uh, Tansy's here. And I was like, I don't even know who Tansy is. <laughs> they're like, they're kicking me out of the, the studio because they wanted you to come in there and talk. And, I, oh. and I, I heard you, like, I mean, as you can see from this episode, Tansy has the best stories. And I didn't even told any good ones. <laughs> I don't be telling good stories. So <laughs> just, it sounds like we need to go up there, do another anytime. I mean, if you have stories, like, yeah. story time with Tandy can go on for all day. My my stories, because I have ADD and ADHD, are pretty much like straight to the point. There's not really a good punchline. It's just I did this one time. She's like, either she's really bored with it, yeah, or she's like, I, I'll say something nonchalant. She's like, what the? Fuck I see did things just- as a story. So I put myself in situations that I can tell a great story later. Gotcha. So I say, like, how far can I push the situation so that I can have an amazing story to tell? Yeah. Right, babe? Like, I, we've had some... We had one last week. When we, we had this married couple coming up, our fan, podcast fan. This is crazy. Last story. Okay. It'll take us right to the three-hour mark. Nice. <clears throat> so we had this couple, they're podcast fans. They live about an hour away from my distillery. And they come to see us like twice a year, three times a year, big podcast fans. And, um, and so they're real sweet, but you know, uh, it, it, whatever, never had a problem. They've never been weird. He sends me a lot of messages. I just don't respond to them, but most people do send me a lot of messages. You know, their messages like news articles, like okay. memes, like, I mean, look at my phone. I can show you my phone. I have like nine, I have over a thousand messages. But he wants to be on the forefront of your mind. Yeah, I guess. I actually feel genuinely bad, and I'm not famous in any way, but I feel really bad if I don't reply to everybody that engages. It would be impossible for me because in three hours I've been podcasting with you, Mm -hmm. I will go back. I'll have 20 to 25 missed text messages. I will go out of here, go to the bathroom. I'll respond to three or four. I'll come back out. My wife and I will go to a restaurant. I will respond to two or three more on the way to the restaurant. I will eat dinner with my wife. I will leave, respond to three or four more. But on the top of that, I've had dinner. I've had that. I'll have four or five more text mm-hmm. messages added to the list. And so those at the bottom, I'll never see because I'm not going to scroll back. And people are mad at me. 
I, w- I told my wife, I wake up every day just knowing that there's a whole horde of people mad at me because I haven't responded. But that's just text. Right. Now you got Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. I mean, every day people are like, why didn't you, call, why didn't you text me back? Yep. Why didn't you hit me back? And I'm like, I just never saw it. It's not like I said, oh, Drew texted me. Fuck Drew. I don't want to hear what he has to say. I just never got down that far. Yeah. You should just text me three or four more times and kept yourself at the top of my list. I don't know. I can't sit there all day. Or you know what? If I did, she'd be mad at me at dinner. You'd be mad at me podcasting. You would be mad, you know, because I'd be yep. doing this all the time. So um, I can guarantee in the three hour time that we've been sitting here, I haven't missed a single message. Oh, my single phone call, my phone's a single bothering. email. Oh, my, my phone's in my pocket. I, I can't even imagine. I don't even want to. I don't even want to think. I'll show you after. <clears> I, I I get <clears throat> so I don't use Facebook Messenger. And I have it right on my profile that I don't use Facebook Messenger. Okay. I'll check it. And I'll check it for the businesses and stuff like that. I typically don't respond. And here's the reason why. I try and keep the, the avenues that my actual clients, especially right. paying clients, can contact me to more official methods. Right. I don't want you messaging me on Instagram with one line. You should be better at that. And then messaging me on I'm Facebook terrible like that. Yeah. Because I don't go back and revisit each of them. I, I ask her all the time. I'm like, yo, who messaged me that one thing? Like what app was that on? Because I'm like, was it email? Was it Instagram? So I know <laughs> I know that if if I read it on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and I don't have the I, the notification icon, I'm not gonna revisit it. So now you might have asked me an important question on one, and I'm expecting an email or a call right. or a text. And now I look like an asshole because I didn't fix the problem yeah. that was over here. So I keep it very tight. Yeah, that's need, important. Yeah. Like I, would, I need to do better at that. But anyway, this guy is like, he messages me. I very, I never respond. Anyway, so like they came in um, and they come in like three times a year. And they came in the other night. And he's like, he's a huge Tansy fan. <clears throat> I've never been a fan of anybody like you, per se. You could clear your throat when you that, so. uh, it's, it's, do, it's you know? weird. Do I don't know. Do I don't think it's weird when you have faith. Like, I don't know. Like, I guess people can like you, but like when somebody's like really into you, it's just weird, weird flex. So, but he's, he's a nice guy. And so he's, I've got another fan that's a trucker that stops by okay. and brings me major gifts, oh, okay. like expensive gifts, oh. like pillows, expensive bottles of wine, knives, uh, Zippo what is lighters. He do I don't know. With he would wear me. To you. He would wear me, yeah, right? Yeah. Maybe we know this guy. Like, it's so listen crazy. to what he just said. Wine, knives, pillows. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, right? Like he buys baby gifts. It's, he's like, oh, you know, he's like slowly playing yeah. your murder. Yeah, I got okay. it. It's fine. Um, so anyway, they they came in and uh, he's talking to me like you're talking to me. Right. We're just having a conversation. He's asking me also at my bar okay i'm behind my bar i have customers down to the right but my bar manager my bartender she's talking to that like the customers i'm just having a one-on-one with this guy but it's still a pretty full bar not his wife no his wife's there like kind of like you're right there but like if you were to like move off to his shoulder over here that's where she would have been standing so i'm talking to him he's telling me all the things you know all of a sudden she's like like staring at me, right? And so I'm looking at him and I'm trying not to like make eye contact with her because I'm like, why is she staring at me intently? Then she goes, and then she's like, that's so I'm like, what the fuck? And so I'm like, kind of like doing the dancing eyes. Like she goes, boom, whips both tits out. <clears throat> I snap into him and I'm like, off. Right. No, like, she, I, get, I, give, I give her a call. Like, hang on. She comes into the store. So I'm like, <clears throat> um, oh, and I'm oh trying to listen God. to the guy, and the guy he doesn't miss a beat. He's still talking. And she, she's behind. Yeah, he doesn't know. Right? Or she's know? no. He has no idea, okay. as far as I know. And then she's like, she like does the wave, and I'm like, I look at it again. She does it a second time. I'm like, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? And now I'm thinking in my brain, like, what if this dude and you catches have cameras, me? Right? No. Oh my god! I don't have cameras, my mom. <laughs> So I'm like, dude, what if this guy like catches me like looking at his wife's tits and oh like he thinks God. it's like me or something? Like, I don't know. So I'm like, I'm like starting to get nervous, you know. So I'm still trying to like make eye contact with him. And she's like laughing behind him and she's like doing like this. Sh- <laughs> but she's drunk too. Like she's 
She's drunky. So she does it a third time. Oh my God. And this time she's like, like that. And she's like, and he turns around and she's like, like, like acting like that. And I was like, oh, I have to go. Um, I'm sorry, sorry, dude. I just remembered I left the crock pot on <laughs> at my house. I have to go turn it off. My bar manager, she's like, what? She's like, just call Ashley. Have her turn it off. And I was like, no, no, I've got to, uh, I got to turn off the crock pot. She's like, a crock pot? Like, what the fuck? Since when did you know what a crock pot even is? How I'm did like, they miss it? shut the fuck up. And so like, I leave, I call her and I'm like, dude, what do I do? Like, blah, blah, blah. So I end up driving around the town. I call my bar manager. I was like, listen, I'll tell you everything. Just shut the fuck up about the crock pot shit. I was lying. There's no crock pot, but you've got to t- just, t- when they leave, I will come back. And she was like, uh, okay. So I'm driving around like my town waiting for them to leave my bar. And I come back and I tell her the whole story. She's like, what the fuck? I was like, yo, right? Like, what was I supposed to do? Like, Hey man, like your wife's showing me her titties. <laughs> What's the age range but, for them? Like, what do you think the age range? Because she knows who they are. 45. 45? Yeah, like 45. Oh. Yeah. yeah. With like a lot of kids. Like, they have like three or four kids. Oh my God. Four kids. I was, kids. So I was thinking, thinking a retired couple. No. So, okay. Like, wow. <laughs> like four kids, like, yeah, three kids, four kids, something like that, dude. And I'm just like, bro. So, like, I've told this on two podcasts now yeah. uh, because it's like a great story, but it's like. So, they're huge Stancy fans. So. I, He's going to know that his wife was flashing her tits. Dude, I said it on my main show. Uh, yeah. I said it on he's my already, main show. So. He's already found out. But, yeah, They've already had or a they huge might, they, might fight. Be, they might be pineapple people. Right? Well, yeah, so here's like the thing. He was... My bar manager did some research. Oh, God. Oh, she God. found them. She found her on Reddit. Reddit? Uh, yeah. What, what That's where, like, all the swingers go to, like, find hookups. Nope. Don't even go there. I my know. wife and I are on Reddit. I, I have never my been wife, on Reddit. Oh, uh, we are on Reddit a lot. Reddit, Reddit is a great place to find news or anything. But okay, you can okay. find like so the way you can find it is if you type in like Raleigh, you like you just say you type in Wilmington, right? Okay. On on like a Sunday afternoon. And I do this. You know how like some people check um uh what do you call it when people get arrested? Mug shots? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you go to Raleigh, like I do this every Sunday. It's, it's been a habit of mine for like five or six years. And when I was a cop, more than 10 years. When I was a cop, I, on every Sunday, I would type in Raleigh on Reddit. And it would give you anybody that typed in Raleigh on the social webs on Reddit and wrote any articles about Raleigh would show up. So it'd be like, man shot. Or like, I knew the guy that got shot. And you could, as a cop, you could be like, oh, well, Mr. Blue Comb 68 how did you know the guy that was murdered? And then you could like look into this dude's profile and then maybe call the detective. Like there was always like, there's just a bunch of, sh- there's so much information on Reddit you, that like you can get anything you want. You can, no, no, no. Substitute. This will make you feel better. You news, can substitute, news. you can substitute Google or Reddit. Yes. 100%. If you want to get direct. My wife goes on Reddit for, what do you go on Reddit for? You're on there. Recommendations or advice yeah. like for people talking about anything. Reddit. Okay, so how does it pertain to her being impossible pineapple person and so, flashing boobs? We went on Raleigh. Okay. Just typed in Raleigh. Okay. And wait, on Sunday, typed in Raleigh. On Saturday, which is the a newer post, mm-hmm. was Raleigh gone wild, went to X bar and then X bar hooked up with X and X and then a big giant picture of her and her pussy. And I was like, yo, what? And I show it to her and my bar managers, of course, we're all texting this and they're like, this is her. This is her. And I'm like, holy fuck, this is her. And that was the week prior to her flashing. No, it was that week. It was that, that weekend. With like a bar over her eyes. Like just like a bar like (laughs) to disguise her. But we're like, we all know that that's definitely her. Wearing the same outfit. Plus, you know what her tits look like. So, mm-hmm. so they were out in Raleigh, going to like sex bars. Wow! And it was in the post that her husband was with her. No, she just said, "I went." She's like, "Had a date night this weekend. We went to," and she named a twenty four seven one of those twenty four seven sex video shops, where they'd have like glory holes and uh, what? Uh, yeah. That's there's, a thing? Yeah. I think there's one right here. Yeah, on, there's on definitely the one right here in Wellington, for sure. I've driven past it. I've seen the sound. I'm like... No, I know that there's a if triple it's tri- X. Yeah, and if it says 24-7, 
They have glory hole events. They have glory hole events. Yes, they have events. When you see the parking lot empty all the time, and then yeah. you go by on a Friday night, and there's like the whole parking lot's full, they're having a glory hole. That means there's some chick sitting on the other end of a hole, maybe a chick. It's probably a dude or a dude, and you can put your wiener in the hole and. Uh, and uh, they give you a score, yeah. <laughs> and maybe a blowjob or both. Now, how I learned that was I was a cop. I don't know. I was a cop, and the warrants I was trying to run warrants on a guy. And I was behind him and I ran his plate and he had warrants and he turned in to a, the 24 hour sex thing on a Friday night. So I pull into the parking lot. The dude gets out of his car and he goes into the, the building because when you run somebody for warrants, it might show that they have warrants, but you cannot arrest them based on your computer saying that they have warrants. You have to then go to the court system, oh. which is a separate page and log in to make sure it's still valid. Because if you have a warrant and you go to court, I'll be censored here. And you go to court and you come back from court, it might take 24 hours for that gotcha. to, to show. So I had to go to the physical website that show that's updated immediately. And internet in a cop car is not always like. Right. So this is often. So when you want a cop that's behind you and you're like, why did you follow me for like over a mile? It's not because he wanted to follow you for a mile. It's because he ran your tag. It came back expired. He looked at your criminal record, which takes about a minute to come back. He goes through your criminal records. He wants to see who he's dealing with. Because if you're a cop, you don't want to walk up on fucking serial killer or, you know what I mean? You want to know what you get into. So it's usually the internet is why they're following you for so long. So this guy goes inside. Anyway, he comes like he has validated warrants. And I'm like, game on. So I get on the phone. I'm like, yo, I'm going to need some backup. I'm going to go into the sex shop. They're like, get out of that parking lot. <laughs> and I was like, no, he has warrants for domestic violence. They're like, get out of that parking lot. Like, we don't go there for any reason. <laughs> And I'm like, yes, more. No, pull, hug. What is it? What is it called? A tug and tug and what is the a glory hole? No. Oh, rub and tug. Yes, that. Wow. That's that. a massage parlor. Wow. We don't go to those either. We're not allowed. <laughs> like, which is crazy. Like, you know, the fucking giving rubbing tugs in there. But anyway, so I'm like, they're like, dude, it's the parking lot full. And I said, again, they're like, it's glory hole night. Get away. And I was like, glory hole night. That's what I learned. <laughs> they, they literally have glory hole night. I like, had once no a idea night. until yeah, oh, that's that's awesome. that's now thing. today. So, yeah. So I didn't get to arrest that guy. <clears throat> and which is, here's what's crazy. is like, if he would have went into Walmart, could have grabbed him. If he went to church, could have grabbed him. If he went into a baseball game, could have grabbed him. If he went anywhere, could have grabbed him. But because he went into one of these 24-7 shops. So why don't they go in there? Good question. Good question, no, no. Why wouldn't they want you? I don't know. It's, maybe there's judges in there. Maybe mm -hmm. there's politicians. I don't know. I think it's strange, though, right? Like, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm, I'm not shitting on you. I'm with you. Like, Super why? Weird. Why can't I go and get? I can go get them anywhere else I want, but I, and I have to get out of the parking lot? Mm -hmm. I can go through Food Line right now and run every tag for no fucking reason and see who has warrants if I want to. It made more sense as soon as you said judges and politicians and stuff like that because they don't want you to recognize them in right. an illicit location. Yeah. If they're in church, oh, he's in church. It's, church. it's not a problem. Yeah. He's at the grocery store, not a problem. Oh, he's in a sex shop getting his dick looked at? Right. That's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so, yeah, Which, no. by the way, I, I have, it's time for my inspection. So, so there's one of moments that I'm going to go get in. Just, you know, I'm doing it for you. Uh -huh. right? like it's it's for, time for your whole inspection. Yeah, there, my, there are only two roads in Wilmington, and they converge right over here at Monkey Junction. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you can't miss it because yeah. it has the big 10 foot tall XXX letters yeah. on the roof. Dude, and those things stay in business forever for a reason. It's not because people don't go there. There's uh, a handful of people that go there, and it's, it's a very handful. Unintended. <laughs> Unintended. <laughs> Unintended. Yeah. 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 It's a mouthful, but. Uh. <laughs> oh, but yeah. So, yeah. So, now. You know, You're the I'm, only one of us who's been there. <laughs> I've never been in, I never went inside. <laughs> Oh, uh, wish I had. But, uh, wish I had. Well, I'd love to go in one. I feel like I need to go in one for a podcast. Maybe, maybe the four of okay, us go, I, go in one. I told, I, I, I told will, her about episode one hundred. I, I told her about that. I will give yeah. you permission to go inspect yeah. one without go. me. No, I don't need no, no, to no, be I want there. You, you no. gotta stay in the parking lot. You just sit in the car. I need okay, to get out. I need, you, I need yeah. you to come with me for a couple reasons. One, you know. So anytime we'll see somebody like walking or in a restaurant or on a TV yeah. show, I'm like, that person's fucked up. Math. Crap. Why why do they have where's Sunday? Chloe's fucked up. Hi, Chloe. Is Sunday upstairs? Um 
I always have a comment about everybody. Yeah. It's and, fun to judge. Yeah. It's fun to, it's fun to profile, yeah. especially when you're a cop. And I know that if we went in somewhere, she'd be like, what did you think of this person? But if I went by myself, she'd be like, what'd you see? Yeah, see what I saw. Yeah, yeah. So I told her, you know, in Bragg Boulevard, there's the Asian Square. And I told her story. I was never stationed there. So, okay. Well, there's the Asian Square, and it's like an old, like, food line parking lot. Okay. Like, you know how they're built, like, almost in a half square? Or you would have, like, pay less and then, like, you know, a rent a, a rent a furniture. Normal, normal shopping center. He's Asian like, food. All, you know what I'm talking about? Like, they're all conjoined. Yeah, sure. So there was an old, empty one in Fort Bragg on Bragg Boulevard, and it, and it was, like, all out of business. So, all the businesses were empty and they called this the Asian square because it was a brothel and each one of the rooms had a different brothel thing going on and they would come outside. They'd have their titties out and they would do all these gestures. It would be like this crazy, like open air uh, prostitution thing. And you were off limits from going there. When you get stationed at Fort Bragg, you have to sign something that says you will not go there. I've had this conversation That's with you. How well known this place is. So her being this master student, you know, college educated human being, she's like, no way, that's illegal. You can't have brothels and like if it was that well known, they would just bust it. And I was like, no, it's a hundred percent a thing. One day I'll take you there and show you. So a couple of years later, so please tell we're us going going to Fayetteville, and I'm like, hey, this is before kids. And I'm like, hey, let's go to Fayetteville. I want to show you where I was stationed and blah, blah, blah. So we drive down to Fayetteville. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to take you through the parking lot on the Asian Square. She's like, no, you're not. And I was like, I'm she's like, it doesn't exist. And I was like, you're about to find out. So we pull into the parking lot. She's like, it's just an empty, rundown parking lot. It's like abandoned. And I was like, just give it a second. The first door opens. This little Asian girl with no top on. She's like, you know, doing the blowjob gesture and she's like oh my god oh my god and she's like go 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 drive down i'll go to the next one and this other woman comes out and it's like two women they're like making out and they're like 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 trying to get you to come in she's like oh my god dude every single door it was like eight doors like out just of the movie. boom and she was like go drive drive and i was like we're in a parking lot i have to like go around the whole thing i can't just like floor it like i'll kill somebody and she's like this is insane and wait like the whole drive it was like an hour she's like that is crazy like it was like a movie. It's like a real bro. Like you weren't kidding. I was like, bro, it's been like that for 30 years. So what did you sign saying that you weren't going to go there? Would you, what, what was the punishment if you did? I don't know. Because I obviously just don't they, get caught. they obviously put it in place because it's, soldiers it's, obviously went there. Yeah, so what was well, the so punishment? the funny thing was, is like my buddy, um, he was a private at the time and, um, and I was much higher ranking than him, but uh, one of my squad guys and, and he called me, and he was like, hey, man, I fucked up. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, I was like, what's God. going on? He's like, I need $500 like right now. And I was like, what are you talking about? Oh He's like, dude, I'll, I'll fucking just bail me out. I swear to God. I'm like, I'm never going to do this again. Like, I don't care. He's like, can you help me? And so I end up getting another guy. And he and I get in a car. And we each go and pull like two. Because back this is ATM days. And you couldn't pull out more than $250 from an ATM. So I end up going to pull out $250. I find another guy to give me $250. Bucks. So me and two soldiers. And we're like, where are you at? He's like, I'm at the Asian square. And I'm like, you motherfucker. So we go and we pick him up. And there's like these two small Asian dudes that are like old as fuck standing there next to him. And he's got like, he's like this big beefy Mexican, like probably 220 years old and like 19. And it's like, he could have beat the fuck out of these old Asian dudes. But he's standing there. We hand the Asian dudes the 500 bucks. They release him to us yelling at him in fucking Chinese. We're like, what the fuck is going on? He was like, bro, like I made out with her and then she offered to give me a blowjob. I asked her how much. She wouldn't tell me the answer. And then she wanted 500 bucks. I didn't have 500 bucks. And they said like they were going to kill me and not let me leave if I didn't pay the 500 bucks. And I was like, one, I would have punched both of those dudes in the face and just left. Were you ever ever stationed in Korea or Japan? No. Okay. So I was explaining to her the Juicy Girls in Korea and how they're basically sex trafficking hostages because they get there, you know, they're sold the premise that you're going to send money back to your family and all this, that, and then they take their passport from them and they have to work at the bars and you pay for their time. And she was asking me if I did. And I was like, no, I, I I actually enjoyed, I went out and like learned the culture in Korea and went to like all these different places, monuments and all like shit that I don't really remember now. But at the time I was like, I'm not here paying for some prostitutes time. I'm like learning something new. 
And it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. The only difference is that it was here in North Carolina yeah. on American soil. Yeah. That was outside of American soil in another country. Yeah. She didn't believe me, though. She was like, that is the craziest shit I've ever seen in my whole life. And she was like, you didn't go there, did you? I was like, no, I only went that one time to bail that one dude out. I didn't go inside. I'm just right here on the sidewalk and handed this dude five hundred dollars in cash. We got our buddy back, and that was the end of it. I don't remember or even know if there was anything I liked that around betting. We were so close. Well, there's to- that strip club at Benning. Yeah, that's. But we were so we were so there. we were so close to Auburn. I've heard stories. I've never been there. And I, I was stationed in Benning. When I have. I've never been there. I've, I've been to Benning for like once, but I didn't go to the strip club or I didn't even leave place. I, w- I was stationed in Benning when Cam Newton was in Auburn. So, dude, we were any chance we got, like football games, basketball games, whatever was going on. Like we wanted, to, it was forty-five minutes away. Why wouldn't we go there? Right, college party That's town. All time, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know, like any, like only like the sleaziest of sleazy would probably go to that strip club because I've never heard anything. It was like the strip clubs in Jacksonville, yeah. Florida, North Carolina. Like I've never, I've never met anybody that's been to one, but I've heard. Thousand stories. Yeah, I, I, how I, I, shitty they are. And, I was uh, the soldier that was just smart enough that I. I did not go to strip clubs as I, a soldier. I heeded the warning when they're like, "Hey, this, this, and this happens." I don't know. The there. first time I went to a strip club was with you, and we never just went to a strip club. We go. We were always like with a group of people that just happened to want to go to a strip club or something, and we just got suckered into going to it. But and then one time we all, I want, I was like, I was a sommelier for an event, and a dude owned a limo service. He's like, dude, if you're ever in Raleigh and you ever like need to drive home, this is before Uber. He was like, dude, just call me and I will hook you up. And so we were all getting drunk at a brewery at like four in the afternoon. And we were like really scared because there's no taxis that would go all the way to Clayton. And so I said like, hey, well, oh, like I got this number. I can call this guy. Let me see if he'll hook us up. And then we could just drink at this brewery. And I mean, and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you guys. What, what time do you want to leave? And I was like, yeah, well, like, maybe like an hour. And he's like, all right, I'll have you. I have an escalate out front for you guys. You guys want to go? You guys want to go out afterwards? And I was like, you guys want to go out afterwards? And they're like, yeah, sure. And he's like, all right, I'll get you a bottle of the club. And he's like, y'all can go to dinner and then we'll go to the club and he'll just drive you and then he'll drive you all the way back to Clayton. And I was like, you guys want to do that? And they're like, yeah, sounds fine. Man. Like, we don't have to pay for it. Yeah. So we didn't know that the club meant the strip club. <laughs> the gentleman's club. The gentleman's club. <laughs> so we end up driving up in this Escalade. We have no idea. And I didn't even know this gentleman club existed. Right. It was out by the airport. We'd never been there. I'd never even been down that road. And we ended up in this fancy fucking gentleman's club and all these strippers are waiting to let us out of this Escalade and so escort what, us what in. What is this... a fancy gentleman's club? <clears throat> it's well, just, they just call it that because it sounds better than strip. Club. Well, so no, no, no. I, I want to know. We went to a strip club in Tampa called Odyssey. Okay. How many have you been to total? Because I don't know. I mean, we went to Three, if you count the one your cousin was working at. No, that's four. Oh. Four, if that's the one. Okay. So we went to Odyssey. And you went to support your cousin's stripping? That was that's an accident. Kinda, we didn't, again, it was an accident. again, we did not know. It was an accident. You say that now. Yeah, we went out to eat with my cousin, who I hadn't seen in like 20 years. Okay. And she was like, I have to go by my job and pick something up. Okay. And she's like, let's make a stop. And then we stopped behind a place that was like, I'm like, this looks like a strip club. And it's called Wacko's. And she's like, come in and meet my friends. And we walk in the back door and it's wow, like the back door to a strip club. And yeah, Wacko's. She, she was a stripper. And we got to okay. see all the backstage strippers putting their makeup on and shit. Oh, okay. So, okay, four if you want to include that one. But the first one we ever went to was she had some really creepy friends who were trying to live out some marital fantasy that we, Meryl? again, didn't know about. Marital. Oh, marital. marital. And they wanted to go to a strip club while they were in town. It was very awkward and they were like begging us to take them. And they were guests from out of town staying with us in Tampa. Okay. And we were like, I mean, I guess, I mean, we were like, should we take them to a strip club? And it's like all they wanted to do. So we were like, I guess we'll just take they them. From, they were from a town where strip clubs were illegal. Oh. Yeah. So, so this is like, the only way that they could go. Okay. And they wanted us to go with them. It was really awkward. And we went and it was terrible. And it was like the shittiest strip club. So it was just like, Imagine like the movies, like all black with like LED lights, like on a stage, fucking subpar, naked chicks dancing on a stage. It was creepy. We were sitting at the very back, like on a couch, like sitting like this because we were like grossed out by the whole thing. (laughs) His dude's getting a fucking like basically an over the pants hand job by a stripper right in front of us. And she's like, oh, my God, it was just the worst experience you could ever experience at a strip club. 
And that was your first. That was our first, mm-hmm. both, both yeah. of us. And I was like, bro, that is <laughs> fucking gross. And the dude that we went with that was married sat at the stage with his arms on the stage like this, like looking up at the strippers. And we were like, what a creepy motherfucker. Full, like, also, full nude full strip nude. club, meaning no alcohol. Wait, what? Yes. Wait, what? Yeah, no alcohol because it's full nude. Florida, full nude strip clubs, no alcohol, uh, which makes yeah. the experience yeah. even more. So you can't even be drunk. So you're just sober experiencing it. So like we, anyway, it was, it was a weird, we didn't stay very long, maybe like an hour or two. Um, maybe not even two. two. I, I went to yeah. one in San Antonio. Look, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. You. No, no, no. I went to one in San Antonio. It was BYOB. This one was BYOB what? as well. This I'm, was BYOB as well. I'm 19 years old in the AIT. They let us buy it. The, the, the liquor store was next door. So you walk in. You buy your case of beer, yeah, and then you walk into the strip club right. with your case of beer, and you pay like forty bucks. We year. didn't know, I so we got all the way in. We didn't and know you could do that. I didn't either. And, and but this one was in, the same way. If you go you back out, it. you have to pay yeah, again. So right. we were stuck with no alcohol. Yeah, so we were watching stuck. my friends be really creepy. like, and the, and the wife was like really creepy. Are they divorced like, now? Oh, listen, yes, yes. Okay, she got up on the stage and she's lesbian now with the oh, yes, but like he was. I mean. When he, he's not exaggerating. Elbows on the stage, looking up, full like, nude. It was so gross. It was so gross. And he she he was so intent on it. She finally got up there to like dance too, to be like, "I'm your wife. I'm here right. too." Like, yeah. hey, it was wild. So that was wow. our first. That was our first. And we just saw like there was like the dirtiest things ever. And then our second experience was when this car took us to the strip club, and it was a gentleman's club. Come but I mean, it's one. nice. It like, was like, gentlemanly. Like, like it's like so a like, cigar I don't, lounge. I don't, I don't know the difference. Okay, so like if you so imagine, like the bartenders were in like like top suit and tie, and like oh. this strip like the the chairs were the like leather, were. and it was very clean, and the lights are really pretty, and like not full nude. Or like or imagine if you went into like a like imagine if you went into like a Ruth's Chris or like a not Ruth's Chris, but like a really really nice. Like a nice cocktail bar or something like that, you know, it's just nice. Like the cocktail tables are clean and nice, and you got a like a nice movie theater. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's really nice. But the strip club they went to, Odyssey, was like a wooden floor, pitch black, dark. Like the chairs had like cracks. I mean, just grow cigarette smoke, like nasty. Dive so a gentleman's club, cocktail lounge. yeah, gotcha. yeah. Okay. Like the, the gentleman's bar makes you feel like you should be dressed up, and all the women are gorgeous, okay. and all the okay. male waitresses, are, I guess, gorgeous too. If you went, like, they don't just hire slouches you know what i mean it's like waffle house versus ruth chris okay you know what i mean like, okay ruth okay. chris ain't hiring okay. no waffle house bitches okay. Okay. you know what i'm saying okay. i love waffle okay. house. and all your teeth right okay. and the drinks okay. are nice the glassware is okay. nice the wine's nice like okay. everything like the music thing is very professional it's kind of theatery ish right like the women have like dance routines yeah, that they like do their acts. Like, they're like acts like they have like feathers and shit whereas like the strip club is just like Rap music and some nasty bitch is probably like pregnant, like slapping yeah. around on a rail, like gross. Like this sounds, sounds like the uh, yeah. show that you liked, um, Marvelous Miss Maisel, the club right. that she started out at. Okay. Doing her routine. Right. Like, that was a great show. Yeah, I show. would not equate it to stripping, but okay. No, no, no. Because she started. I, I, she I was, started. I was trying to get there. Like in slummy yeah. Co- yeah. comedy yeah. bars, and now she's like okay. in the high school. Down in the basement. She, up and here, I, if, I remember, if I remember right, she started off not realizing that that's what she was like working in between. Like they would do a routine, what they call flappers. Yeah, yeah. flappers, yeah. So they would do their, their thing, and then she would Oh, come you're out. talking about the next place that she started working at. Not the maybe I don't I don't, I don't you know my number. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I, was, so anyway, I, was trying, I was trying to get that was a gentleman's club and we ended up having like a lot of fun because we were with another couple. Right. And you were um, getting a nice S blade and, and we had like bottle service. Okay. And then so like the two girls bought me and the, the other guy lap dances, which is like okay. really awkward because like we I feel like obligated. Like, looking at your wife dirty no, and like they come and get you and take you to a back room. Oh, like, oh. And they were like, bye. And I was like, uh, bye. It was like, brilliant. Cause when I was getting my, that was my first lap. It was my first and only lap dance. I've never gotten another one. Um, but I was like sitting there like this, like straight edge. And like the girl the whole time, she was like, relax, relax. I'm like, oh, relax. And like, and she was like trying to make me like look at her tits and I wouldn't. Oh, wow. like, I felt super weird. But anyway, we ended up having a good time and uh, we got like really drunk there. And we didn't really watch the show. We were just laughing at each other. Having, it was just fucking whatever. And then the third time we went, um what oh 
the third time we went was we were dating. This was before that time. So this would have been the really the second time we ever went. We were dating and we had no money. And we went and saw a movie at the Dollar Theater. Oh. And we were driving over the Dollar and she was looking at cheap things to do in Raleigh. We just moved there. We'd been there for like five days. And she was like, the gentleman's club has free drinks for women until 11. So you're like, I can drink for free. And so I was like, are we air? going to the strip club? And she was like, I'm good if you're good. I'm like, okay. And we went to the strip club and it was the gentleman's club in Raleigh, not a different gentleman's club, not the airport one, but like uh, Yonkers Road. And there was a bar. So you couldn't even see the strippers at the bar. We sat at the bar. She drank for free. I had a couple of yinglings that were like $3 a piece. And that was probably fifteen dollars a piece. Right, we had like three dollar yinglings, and um, that was the, that was the, that would be number four for us. But. We've never been to one together, and you've never been to one at all. I mean, it's I've, not. I've, I've, a very I've never been to a good one, and I don't want to. I mean, it's not that sorry. entertaining to me, to be honest with you. It's like. I mean, the only thing that's cool about it is that you're fucking horny and ready to go home and fuck. Mm. So, but like, here's the thing. Okay, I only need to go to the strip club for like one minute. I see you get to the parking lot. And I'd be like, yo, let's let's head to the house. Like, I'm I'm ready to go. Yeah. Like, I don't even need to see the stripper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm ready to go. But when you get into the strip club, you're like, fuck. All right. So my my, so my buddy. Should we go? Into the parking yeah, lot. I no, definitely not around here. No, yeah, I would not. I mean, unless you find like a really nice one. That would be There's the dive bar. Like one in Wilmington. So there's not a nice well, one or a bad one. Every, I, one every time I see time. Mad Counts, that's all I think of because they, they do like midget mud wrestling. That's not. I mean, if you're doing it for research podcast <laughs> yeah, purposes, yeah. but if you're doing it for like save your marriage <laughs> well, or something like that, I would totally no, not. No, no. If you're doing it for podcast content. less than a mile right there by the Walmart near our house. Mad Counts. I don't know. I'm not talking about that one. It has an upside down pineapple on every time. Mm. Oh, that's a swinger it. one. Then. Right. Yeah. And now that looks like, weird because we like um, live like near like we live near a swinger community. Yeah, that's like no, it's like it's been in magazines, right? Like I don't know which don't magazine, know. but everybody talks about it. But it's like it's a swinger community. Like it's known for that. We live like right by it, and we for a while now that's been five years. We don't anymore. But when we first opened, it was like what like once a week, once every other week. You know that somebody would try to. Listen us into their swinger group. Like, no, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. You know, thank you but, so much. Jeff. Thanks for offering. But, bro, it's so funny, like how blunt some of the people are. Like they will just sit at our bar and they'll go and they'll be like, So do you guys like do any swapping or anything? And you're like, oh my God. No, uh, we that don't would go and right like, over my oh, head. I'd be so, like, no. it was at first. You, like, you know, was, at first it was about? over our head, but then we got it so many times that we oh were like, You know that it wouldn't for me. I so she's told the story a million times, and we've told the story. You guys probably don't know this, but anytime we go somewhere together, anybody that I see looking her up and down, if they're by themselves and it's not apparent to me that like they're married or anything yeah. like that, I might like make a comment or I'll tell her, I'll be like, Hey, that dude was checking you out. Yeah. If they're with their family and we're in the grocery store, Oh my God. He makes it. Hey, did you get a good look at my wife. You want to take a picture of her tits? I'm just like, oh God. Yeah. Cause yeah. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna do it that blatantly yeah. in the public at one p.m. on a Tuesday, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say something. Yeah, <laughs> I and, think the biggest one was like you know eleven funny? a.m. at brunches with yeah. like an entire family. That's and a restaurant. Extended here, family. Yeah. Well, no, you went there. That's where they did the seltzer thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there. I didn't know the name of it. I've yeah. never known the name of it. The, the I last... was so embarrassed, bro. I so I'm the guy that will see a check. Like in a parking lot, like with like some booty shorts on, or like you know, no bra, or nipples are hanging out, something crazy that like every dude would look at for sure. And all I would think is like, there's a video camera watching me somewhere, yep. and they're not gonna get me, bitch. <laughs> and I will look the opposite way, like knowing that there's no camera. Like I'm still the guy that's like, not today, motherfuckers. Yep. I know you're trying to get me right now, and I'm not gonna do it. Yep. I'll be like, like you know what I mean? Like for, and that's like every time. I always have in my brain that. So I'll never be the guy that gets called out for like checking something you got. Yeah, I, I, I am the guy that's going to be like, no there's, there's going to, it's, it's not even going to be on the ground either. There's going to be a fucking satellite and they're yeah. redoing map imagery of the neighborhood yeah. and they catch you. You're holding your wife's hand and here's this chick across the street and you're staring at her. And now you're on satellite view. Yeah. What I hate is when there's like one that's obvious, like in the grocery store 
And I've done a really good job of not looking. Like, bitch, why'd you have to wear that to the grocery store? Not sure. But you know what? You're not going to get me. I'm not going to look. And I'll go like, I'll do awesome. I'll avoid the aisles that she's on. I'll avoid her at all costs. And then my wife will be like, oh, bet you'd, bet you'd like to hook up with her, wouldn't you? And you're like, God damn it. I haven't looked at her at all. But I'm glad you brought it up. But no, thank you. And I've done a real good job of not looking this whole time. Like, bring that up, you know? Right? Sounds like you 100%. Or we'll see. Like, I'm like, dude, I've done so good. I'm not even looking at that bitch. We'll, we'll see, um, like, what we would consider awkward situations where, like, the guy's five foot two and his wife is six foot. Yeah. Probably has a huge dick. <laughs> huge dick. Probably three legs down there for sure. Probably. Probably. For sure. And she's like, no, never. Is so. Anytime would you ever be with a shorter dude? No, absolutely not. Well, yeah, would you be with a short? It'd be hard to get a shorter guy than you. Yeah, it hasn't been a real <coughs> issue, but I wouldn't like <clears throat> a guy that was shorter than me. Or he would be a certified ninja. I don't like guys who are skinny, like. Yeah, like there's this dude that had a huge crush on her for a long time, and like even after she was married, like it's pretty obvious the dude has a crush on her. Mm -hmm. So I always joke with her about it. She's like, "Ew, he's so skinny." No. She gets so upset with me if I make those kind of comments. Oh, I don't do that. Anymore. You know what I'm talking about. You worked with them at one time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I tease her. Yeah, and to like, me, you know. and we've had a conversation. It's it's an unmarried episode. It'll never air. Um, we had a conversation about it where, to, in from my perspective, I was being funny. I was making a joke. But to, from her perspective, it was mean. You know, like oh, she, what would you say? It was it was just those same kind of comments like oh, oh. like anytime I go for a meeting I have to put makeup on